<laughs> All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Outcast Hunting Podcast. We have a good one for you today, as Steve Harvey says. We got the rest of the story. So last time That's that we met Steve up. Steve Harvey? That would be a. Uh, that is Steve Harvey on Family Har- Feud. No, it's not. No. He says, welcome back. We got a good one for you today. Over here, we got the Smith family. Oh, yeah, that's Steve Harvey. Yeah, yeah. But Pull the rest microphone up. Yeah, like you hadn't done this before. The rest of the story is not Steve Harvey. That's the rest of the story, that's Paul Harvey. Paul, Paul Harvey, Harvey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not what I was mentioning. But you said the rest of the story. Well, you went. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to stay on my wavelength, okay? Uh, okay, so like Paul Harvey then, we got the rest of the story. Yeah. Last time we met, we talked about y'all's just turkey hunting experiences. And you told a story about when the three of y'all went hunting together. I think the best way to open this one up is to let's clarify what really happened. Oh, we didn't introduce who we have. I'll let you introduce who who we have on the podcast. <laughs> oh, here we go. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, uh, <laughs> we got Tim Flowers. That's our dad. That's mine and Talon's dad. We've referenced him a few times in some of our videos or podcasts. But uh, so this is him in the flesh. So we're fixing to get the true story. Yes. We're going to get his side of the story, which he thinks is true. Uh, we'll let we'll let the audience, uh, we'll let them determine what they think about <laughs> everything he says. And just to Should recap. Should be interesting. <laughs> just to recap, like, do you want to retell your side of the story just very briefly? Yeah, so last time what we talked about was, <clears throat> so, turkey season, this past season, uh <laughs> Dad, we talked about how Dad has when he shows up in the mornings, he just has this this look on his face. Just he always has this look, you know. <laughs> he shows up, he's tight lipped. He don't say a word, you know. Talon, you know, the last time in the last podcast, Talon had already killed two birds. So I was going after my second bird of the year, and we swap out like we talked about last time. We swap out shooting. So he shoots one, I shoot one. He shoots one, I shoot one, or vice versa. And uh, so this time, Talon had his birds killed. We were going to kill my first bird, I mean, my second bird of the season. And uh, Talon had already talked to me before we went and told me that he didn't want to take a gun. Uh, He said, I want to go with you. We had roosted the bird the night before. He didn't want to take a gun, you know, all that. So Dad shows up, and, of course, he says, well, where's Talon's gun? I told Dad. I said, well, he don't want to take a gun. We back back up the driveway. We go back. We get Talon's gun anyways. And uh, so when we get there, and of course I asked Dad, you know, what's wrong with you? Uh, and somewhere along the way, I probably said something. He said something, and it set us off. When we all get down there in the road about to go turkey hunting, I set Dad off by when we first got there. I said, well, the turkey's roosted. And keep in mind, we're trying to get to this bird before daylight because we roosted him the night before. If you go down the road, it's wide open. If you go down the road, in the daylight, the turkey's going to see you. So set up on the bird before daylight, and then you're you're golden. You're good. Everything's fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we get down there. Talon's got to go to work that uh, that morning. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Talon's yeah, got to go to work that morning. And then... <laughs> <laughs> this is already getting aggravated. <laughs> Talon... <laughs> hey, he, he gets fired up. Uh <laughs> Talon's got to go to work that morning. He meets us down there. He's on his truck. Me and Dad's on his truck. And <clears throat> we get there, and I said, uh, I said, Joel, the bird, first of all, Dad said, we have a better chance of splitting up and finding two different birds. Well, Talon says, I don't want to go. I want to go with Jansen. I want to go to that bird we roosted yesterday. Anyway, so well, I said, well, the bird's roosted down this creek. Well, I just meant the bird's roosted down this creek. Well, Probably said it with a tone that made everybody aggravated. But Dad, he turned around. What does that mean? Well, I said I'm just saying that he's roost down this creek. I don't mean. He said, "Well, the bird ain't gonna fly off. He ain't, he ain't gonna scare him off for us being here." I said, "Well, that ain't what I mean. All that stuff." So we we go on about our business. So finally, we go on down to the gate, and we're fixing to go in and hunt this bird. We go on. We go up the road, <clears throat> and of course, the decoy is thrown, and the whole nine yards. <laughs> Talon. <laughs> Talon has a smart mouth, even though he's innocent up to this point. Talon gets his smart mouth. That's into the two the th- things that I remember the most is Talon. You better be right. You better I be right. That's what he told me. Saying that, yes, yep. that's what he told me. So that set me off. Well, then that set Dad off. 
So it's just a debacle in the in in the turkey woods that morning, and it's it's ridiculous. He it's, leaves it's and goes crazy. back to the truck. You said he go, he leaves, goes back to the truck. He's out well, in the world the somewhere. Well, the reason I said you better be right is because he made me mad. Because he was <coughs> he he. He can make he anybody says, mad. He says the whole time we're walking up the road to go to this bird, as I'm sitting there saying, it's way too daylight. It's too daylight. It's too daylight. But and if I hear that one, I bet if you could count it a thousand times of from the dirt road all the way up to that little cabin. It's too daylight. It's too daylight. <laughs> well, I heard him at the road. Well, it was aggravating listening to it. It's too daylight. 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 So I finally said, if we go down this stupid thing right here, if we go down this road and the turkey's not down there, I'm fixing to be mad. So I said, you better be right. <laughs> well, then that's when he got mad. So, so you see why I'm always pitching a fit because I deal with this. I've not said a word sitting right here. <laughs> and this is what I've, this is what I'm listening to the whole time. So you get a belly full of it to the point you just <laughs> throw the turkey down. So I'm going to the truck. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, but he put, he, he has a, Never mind, just let him tell a <laughs> stupid story. I'm going to tell the What's story. What's your side of the story? All right, well, here's the story. <clears throat> Yeah, we woke up here at the house with Jansen. We got to get there before daylight. So it, naturally, Jansen wants to wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yes, daylight <laughs> at 5.30. So uh, he's, oh, we got to get in there before the turkey, before the, uh, for any, uh, rooster crows, anything. You got to get in there. <laughs> so we get up and we leave. What The only reason Talon is not involved in this story prior to this is he's got to go to work. He's got to leave at 7.30 or so to go to work. <coughs> so he's on his truck. So he's not involved in minding his conversation, or he would be in the middle of it too. So we're driving down the road, and my oldest son, Jansen, <laughs> my oldest son. Uh, the controversial one, sits there and he tells me, Where are you going? My shirt was messed up. Oh, man. I had to fix my shirt. So we're so driving great. down the road, and uh, we've not gone out of the driveway already. And says, Talon's got to go to work. I said, yeah, he's got to go to work. I said, he ain't been hired on long. I said, he needs to be at work like he's supposed to. Well, he's going to mess up my turkey hunt. It's all about his turkey <laughs> hunt. It's all about his and turkey hunt. That joker's that. smoking that's hot true. about not not being able to kill this turkey. And you know? another thing is, this guy over here, I, I missed two or three hunts out there. Uh, two, two or three. Ask him how many he missed out there on that property. Not one. He was at every one of them. Well, he enjoys going. I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know. What? I, I, let, hey, this is I'm, my story. <laughs> Let's, let me finish my story. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I can see in his face right now. It's hard <laughs> to get no. Here. here, let me tell oh, my side real quick. Oh, fuck. So, <laughs> listen, listen. So, I'm like first the exact of all, opposite of a mediator here. I really want y'all to get going. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's my side of the story is, or this is why I say that, because we show up. Talon's had the job for about, what, two weeks, maybe at the most, a month, a to month be honest. So. A, month a month or two. Or two. A month or two. <clears throat> Very few people that have a job within a month or two can even go turkey hunting. So, But it's great that he can. But here's the thing. On my days off, I don't get to go on the weekends with them. And the reason I can't go is because I'm the only safety manager at Fort Rooker on Saturdays and Sundays, so I have to be there. Talon's got people that can cover down until he gets there at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever time he wants to show up. So the two days that I get to go is uh, Thursday and Friday. So here we are, and the only thing I can think of is when the turkey starts gobbling and he's coming in on a rope, very seldom happens, he's coming in on a rope, and or we, we've got one, he's gobbling on the roost, just like happens from time to time. We get up there, and we don't have time to go get him because Talon has to go to work. Or we got one coming, and it's pushing 8 o'clock, and Talon's got to be by, be at work by 8 o'clock. No way this is all my <clears> fault. <throat> no, we're not saying that. It, I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just it's saying. Get started. I'm just saying. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't I'm got just money. saying. <laughs> your dream's coming true. <laughs> Here's my thing. If, just like this, let, let me say this. If I had to go to work, and you asked me, tell her to go, or, or I said, hey, I want to go uh, deer hunting with you in the morning. But I have to be at work by 7 o'clock. Well, it's your day off. You don't get to go very much, and this is a Saturday. And I say, hey, I want to go with you in the morning. You're going to be happy when I have to climb down out of that tree at prime time, when it's time for deer to be coming out, and I got to go to work, and, and you're sitting there thinking, oh, man, here he is. He's got to go to work. He shouldn't have come. 
because he's supposed to be at work anyways. I mean, I'd time probably out. just put you in a guard how many to help me. So, there you go. There all you right, go. Taylor, how many right. times? Time out. Ask him how many times I got up and walked out whenever a turkey was on the rope on the way to us. No, but the thing is, you got to go to work. So if that ever happens, when if the time it ever comes, happens, ain't time, never happened. Time out. My turn. <laughs> Here's the <laughs> thing. Say what you want. To. As a father, of these two, I'm sitting there thinking, well, how can I solve this issue without making him extremely mad, <laughs> not hurting his feelings? So I say, let's take two guns. Me and Talon are going one side because I know he had to leave. He can go hunt his turkey. But Y'all no. are leaving that detail out. It makes oh, yeah. sense. Oh, it's common sense. Well, that is <laughs> all that common. why he thought of that. That's exactly he why. Just, oh, here I go. No. They know everything about me. <laughs> they know everything about me. I'm trying to solve oh, here it. We go. I'm trying to solve it the best that I can without causing conflict because I know this is a fireball and that one don't give a care. <laughs> so I'm trying to solve it where both people's happy and but no, I'm the bad one. Well, he wants to go with me. So it turns into a debacle when we get there. Because as we pull up from here, it's like Talon was saying, from the time we left here all the way to there, 20, 30-minute <laughs> drive maybe, I have heard, Talon's going to get up and mess this whole thing up. I know right where he's at. I know the trees in. I know this. No, I know you that. showed up late or was sitting in his driveway or something. That made him mad, didn't it, earlier that no, morning? No, he come here that morning. No, you, you waited in your driveway, oh, and then you texted well, him and said, come you out. Well, here's the thing. You picked me up and said, where? Oh, y'all you slept have, in, did you? Y'all, no, I didn't sleep in. I got in the truck with you. And you said, first thing, first thing I do is get in the truck, and this is what you look like. It don't matter what I look you like. You didn't even look at me, say good morning, you didn't say nothing. I said, what's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Well, then you know what that means? <laughs> if I say ain't nothing wrong with me, that means ain't nothing wrong with me. Get in the truck, but let's go. It probably wasn't nothing wrong, but one thing you said that morning was, did you get both guns? I said, well, I think the shotgun that I'm going to be using is in Talon's truck, I believe, because we left it in there or either in your truck. We didn't get Talon's gun that morning, which t- Dad said, we need two guns to shoot two birds if two come up. And I said, well, Talon said he didn't want to shoot. So we went back and got Talon's gun, and then we went. But I didn't know it was going to be a – I didn't know it was a problem that I was going to have to leave or it anything like that. It wasn't a problem Because he me. never said anything about that. Jansen didn't. I reckon he just comes go. up with that on <laughs> he, the fly. He, he, he Here doing, we are. Now, he doing, this is the truth. Now, this is the podcast that's telling the truth about stuff. All right. He didn't want to hurt your feelings, so he bust off on me the whole time. Well, I'm sitting there. Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings. feelings. What is up with my feelings? Why is well, everybody trying not to hurt like my feelings? Because you're like laid back, and he's he is wanting to really kill this turkey. <laughs> so I'm sitting right there thinking the whole nice way. way of saying he's lost. I'm pretty it. much praying. How can I solve this ticking time bomb that's fixing to take place? <laughs> And I sit there and say, well, we'll just take both guns. You can, me and you are going, because whenever you're on one side of the property, you can't hear the birds on the other side. It's a pretty good sized piece of property. So I wanted, and we'd been hearing birds on both sides. So I wanted to take him. We'd go listen to see if we heard something over there. He could go on the side. He had heard the birds. So we get there. We get out. It's cracking daylight. Well, we're, naturally, should we park at the creek or should we go up to the gate? I said, well, foot. I don't <laughs> Naturally. know. I don't know. I said, Where, uh, wherever you want to go. So we ended up parking at the creek, wasting time. Then we sit there and get into a little argument to the point that we decide we're going to go up to the gate. Mm-hmm. So we end up driving up to the gate. That we, That's the argument that started when I said, well, and, the turkey's roosted right down this creek right here. And this whole time I'm right behind them. They pull up to the creek. We stop there. I start to get out. They crank back up and go on even further. So I crank my truck back up and go on even further. I had no clue what was going on. I was just following them. So he gets out of there. They're fussing. Says, what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? I said, well, we're going to go in up here. Well, it, by then, it's done getting a little more daylight. Plenty of time to get into the go turkey hunt. But the trees are thinned, and they had just burned out. I'm talking about pine trees ever 20 foot. It's about the closest any pine tree. So it's wide open. I'm talking mm. about you can see. For just miles, just four shy. or five hundred yards yeah. through there, easy. Mm-hmm. You have to hunt this place like you hunt a field to a certain extent. Yeah, to a certain extent, because it's so especially on, when they're on the roost, they can see out there for for hundreds of yards. Okay, well we're walking. <coughs> we get out the truck. We go around the gate. You know, we're d- pretty much debating. I go under the gate. He goes around the gate. Well, I should have <laughs> went around the gate instead of under the gate. It don't matter. We're both on the same side of the fence. So we go walking up the road, and he's talking about. It's too late now. It's too late now. Sun's up. It's too late. He can see us I'm now. not saying that. No, he is. Yeah, he mm-hmm. is. And I can see you're sitting there saying, 
you, whatever you. I didn't say a word. Whatever. I just followed until I just had. About okay. Had it. Well, then we get up there, and we have okay. we have All seen right. these birds do the same thing over and over. Where you go by a little barn, you go up there on top of a hill. There's a road. The road continues straight, but there's a a road that turns off to the right, goes down to a logging ramp down there, and the turkeys will go to that logging ramp or a ramp or a food plot right there. So he wants to go up to where we saw a strutting mm -hmm. area. I mean, it's obviously you can see the strut marks, wings dragging in the ground, the turkey footprint, whatever. So he wants to go up there, but he thinks it's too daylight. Well, he's been telling Talon that's where we're going. So we go, and we walk right past the road, and that's when he pops off, what are you doing? <laughs> He where said, are we going? Where are we going? He said, we're going to, well, Talon said, he said, we're going to go up here and do so and so. Every right step, in. every two steps, he said that it was too daylight now. Yeah, and from, then Talon, the pop, Talon pops back off. Well, you better be right. If you've done done this and you know right where it's at, you better be right on doing it. So they're bickering back and forth. I'm just sitting there and thinking, well, I just come to have a good time and watch my two sons because I love them so much. <laughs> That's not how. That's no. what's going through my mind. That I just saw not. they're taking time that on up the road. Now here I am up here. So I I don't have a gun. I don't ever take a gun. I'm sitting there toting a big old turkey that ridiculous. Well, you can tell when he's mad, and he was silent the entire walk. Yeah. We like, yes. Yeah. Well, I was scared to say With something. With his lips up. <laughs> the way you two are, you just like going oh off a razor gosh. blade. Y'all aggravating all the time. So we get up there, and uh, they're bickering back and forth. So I just get a belly full of it. And uh, I just toss the turkey down. <laughs> toss it. Oh, my God. Okay. Toss it. Okay. No. Okay. I throwed right. it. Here's JW, you must be watching. Must okay. be church people watching. Okay. I throwed it 50 yards. Does that sound better? Yeah, hey, close. That's, 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 no, you didn't throw it 50 yards. You threw it like you were trying to throw it 50 yards. Yeah. That's more like it. Into the Because it all of a sudden Boom. just it hits us in the backs of the legs. Oh. It bounced back up. The, we saw the turkey yeah. kick it back down to us well, after how it bounced far was How far was y'all in front of me? No, probably from maybe here to yeah, they can't see here that to the TV there. probably. Well, that, well, that's about five, uh, you'd say five, five or six yards. yards. Yeah. So I tossed the. Well, turkey. you started walking back to the truck and then turned around and just threw it from the side and it. Just, oh, now here <laughs> you did. Man. I didn't see all that. <laughs> I just threw the turkey know. down. All he I know did. is he started walking all the truck, I know. Then turned around and threw uh, it like that. This is why all I know. <laughs> all I know is I told. All I know is I told Talon. I said. I don't need you here, and I don't need you here talking to both of them. I can hunt this bird by myself. And, uh, he can't shoot. No, he can't. And it about <laughs> he can't shoot. Down. He needs backup. No, he shot. Hey, you seven. know what the first thing he said when he shot? <laughs> you got a shell? Shoot it. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that so many yeah. times. Oh, yeah, yeah, and he had a pump shotgun. All yeah, he had to yeah. Do was all just, he had to do was shuck a shell. I, yeah. I just lost it. Now, yeah. You got a shell? Boom. You got a shell? <laughs> he shot. Tyler's like, I ain't got no shell. So yeah. I just pumped it again, so shot and rolled it. Body shot it. He don't but nobody we ain't there. been able to eat turkey since he's been hunting. <laughs> yeah. I've had, I used to have good teeth until I started eating pellets. <laughs> this one right here. No, but oh, he, uh, uh, I ain't went on a successful, I ain't <laughs> went on a successful turkey hunt with this guy yet this year. No, seriously. It's always been a disaster. <clears throat> oh, here we I go. Think, seriously, this is for real. Uh, no. <laughs> he always says seriously. I have not in the past three years <laughs> killed a turkey just cold, just dead. He, he's always he's either flopped up, tried to fly off, and I had to shoot again, or the jerkers run across the field and fell out dead about a halfway across the field. Why is I mean, that? I have no idea. Oh, well, I, I, yeah, I'm I not putting my head all the way down. I think I don't. I'm not putting That's my head fact. all the way down. I'm watching the show and not yeah. concentrating on putting my head all the way down, and I'm shooting above. Are you them. nervous when you're shooting, or? I mean, not. No, I mean I'm excited, but I'm not nervous because I've shot a bunch of them, and I used to shoot them cold, just dead as a, dead as a hammer, but. For some Back reason, when his daddy was sitting over his shoulder and saying, there you go. <laughs> sitting down, between, down, the yeah. 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 sitting well, between dad's legs. Good Keep job, head, son. So proud of you. Yeah. you know, good job. Shoot that Jake, son. Yeah. Before he started, <laughs> <laughs> that boy shoot the Jake. Let the big bird run off. Before good he job. thought it was cool twenty-three years old, sitting head. between dad's legs. Do you want me to hold it up for you? I'll hold a gun for you if you need me to. You want me to that turkey yeah, for daddy, you, son? Yeah, dude. Can you set up? That was. That was. Like the days uh, back when he – or before he thought it was cool to shoot him with BB guns and stuff that he uses nowadays. I shoot yeah. turkey sometimes with a 410. Well, he shoots at him. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> he killed one yet with a 410. I killed but. two last year with a 410, but both of them. He I went shot. through a box of shells. One of them I had to take off running and dive on pretty <laughs> much. Do you reckon that's why you keep wood. having bad luck with the shots? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you talking about What would you say you had to do? You had to <laughs> do. <laughs> Last year I shot one and he jumped up and tried to fly off but couldn't fly. I had to take off running and dive, dive out across there the in the hardwoods just you to keep him from getting away. You ever one of the videos of that kid chasing yeah. the turkey? That's, that's what, what I looked like. like that morning. Yeah. yeah. But I have no idea. I think, <laughs> I don't know. Next thing you know, you're the biggest thing <laughs> is. Dark. <laughs> He got he got to outdo everybody else. And That's start right. Doing He's stuff. Right. Blow dark. Blow dark. Blow dark. Blow dark. But uh, the turkey. <laughs> oh, um, He's always got to up me one somehow. <laughs> try to. I, I, I have. There ain't no try. <laughs> Not in deer. <laughs> Uh, huh? Son, no. not in deer. I've shot more turkey left in than he's ever shot in his life. <laughs> how many were the right How now. many were the four ten? Uh, oh uh, gosh! Uh, <laughs> uh, here, well, one here's, up. here's the thing. Yeah, here's the thing. I got sense enough not to go with a four ten. How many with a bow? Uh, who called it up for you with a bow? You well, killed it with because, a bow? I thought, yeah, I I thought there was one, one still. No, oh, I he shot, shot it. One. Oh, that's he a ran story. off. <laughs> you let me tell you a story. <laughs> I was yeah. about to say I thought he still had his. Okay, I'll tell you the story. I was at uh, <laughs> Fort Rooker, and uh, I saw a turkey run. There's a, like a six or eight-foot fence, and a gobbler just trying to get through the fence. This is when Dad about. was at the fire station. Yeah, and I saw him going through it. I said, hey, this is at our old fire department training ground. I said, uh, it's green grass out here. I said, it's right dust dark. I said, he's going to go down the end of this little logging road. He's going to roost. I said, we can set up here and uh, call him up here to this road and shoot you one with your bow. So he comes, meets me over there that next morning. We get off, or I get off. We go over there before daylight set when, up. When was this? How long ago was it? This is probably about four years ago. Yeah, that's more than that, and I've been retired. Yeah, six, okay. six years ago. Several. Years it was his ago. last year at the fire station, probably. Several, okay, uh, several years ago. But uh, we go down in there, set up. Well, sure enough, he gobbles right straight down the road from us. And we we get off the road probably five yards, setting off in some uh. Palmetto bush, shit, not palmetto, but uh, yopon. Yopon, uh, yeah, yeah. Something. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's gobbling. Well, I I call, and uh, boy, he hammers down in the road. I said, all right, he hears us. So I call three or four more times. He's still on them. He gobbles. After a while, you can tell the difference. He's on the ground, and he's coming. I said, all right, he's coming. Be ready. Well, we he didn't have to tell me all this. I was like 22 years old. He did. Dad has a bad <laughs> habit of treating us like we're still six. Yeah, oh, we told you that in the last podcast. Yeah. Dad has a habit of: Do you have your underwear? Do you have your socks? Yeah. Are you cold? Are you hot? I've been out there so many times without their underwear. <laughs> and then <laughs> the turkey, the turkey, the turkey, the turkey gobbles from here to the neighbor's house, and then he says, "The turkey just gobbled." Like we didn't just all yeah. hear the turkey. Be still and don't move. Yeah, he can We've see. We've been hunting. You. I'm 31. I've been hunting with him since I was seven years old. I've heard this for however many years. It still works, though, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess so. Sometimes. You wait. Y'all wait till y'all have a little kid one day. Boy, I can't it's... wait. I hope I'm alive enough to roll out my wheelchair to go see it take place. <laughs> But, uh, it, yours works better okay, than Jansen's a lot of the time. Well, well, of course it does. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, we sitting there. Well, we're facing our backs are like down the road where the turkey is because we weren't going to shoot him. We was going to wait till he come out in the field. Well, he gobbles. He's coming up the road. Jansen's sitting there with his bow and arrow. I don't know if he's on his knees or what. Something I think. Yeah, uh, on my knees behind yeah. the yopon bushes. And I'm talking about, uh, you know, I, I call and he hammers right there on us. Next thing you know, you hear, I, well, I said, I said, he's right here. Well, here he comes. I mean, they act like if you're talking or turkey's coming. They act like that turkey knows what English is. I talked with a guy years that ago. That's what English is. And he's sitting there and said, oh, man, you, and he was right. You can talk when a turkey's right there. I mean, it makes may make him a little nervous, but he don't know what you are. He don't know if you ain't a bird or a. Whatever out there doing something. No, that's so, not the point. It's not the point of your talking. Let's get back on my story. Oh, I get it. All right. So <laughs> the turkey walks by four or five yards from us, walks right by, goes out there. I think we had a decoy mm -hmm. set up out there. A little Jake decoy. He come out Well, he goes straight. out there, and he's out there 15 yards maybe. And I'm talking about he's blowed up with his butt to us. And I'm thinking, well, shoot him straight up, you know, right up his spine. Mm -hmm. Uh Turkey goes out there, he's fanned out, he's turning, going around it, and he draws back. I think, well, this is going to be good. Now, he's, how old was he? I was okay. in my 20s. 
All right, you're about 23, 24 years old. Probably. Well, here's one of them things when Dad should have said, shoot him right there. <clears throat> but no, I sit there and say, my son's 23, 24 years old. <laughs> He's tired of me telling him all this stuff. Let's see what he does. Mm -hmm. So you notice that after you told me, I hear him drumming. Here he comes. He's on the ground. <laughs> I should have Like told I've you. never been before. That okay. was a turkey that gobbled. Okay, yeah. I should have told him the whole, all of it. I wish you would have at that point. Say, oh, I wish no, you see, listen, here it goes. Listen, here I, it goes. I wish you would have saved all the, I hear him drumming, because I can hear him too. There he is. He just gobbled. I heard him too. I wish you'd have saved all that and said, shoot him right up the butt. <laughs> then, well, because here's what I didn't do after, before he tells the rest of the story. I didn't do the research on where to shoot a turkey with a bow before we went i thought if i just hit him it'll kill a bird that ain't no problem mm -hmm. well that's not the case so go ahead so the turkey's <clears throat> strutting he's blowed up i mean his chest sticking out and the front part of the turkey or whatever probably 30 percent of just air where he's just got it blowed up in his chest and all so you know i'm sitting there thinking well he's fixing to stick this one it's gonna be something for the record books well he lets the air fly well, it goes through the turkey, and I'm thinking, well, it's going to be out there flopping. We're going to go out there and get it. Well, the turkey just stands up and runs off. I said, what the <laughs> heck? He said, I hit him. I said, yeah, you shot him right through the very part of his chest, turned sideways. I said, all you done was went right through that little bladder where he blows up whenever he's out there strutting. Mm -hmm. So his beard and this skin <laughs> right here is just flopping off like this as he runs off, you know. He runs off. I said, well, let's just give him a while. I said, we can't chase him down. <laughs> he was running 100 miles an hour. I said, it ain't like you wounded him. <laughs> he ain't wounded. He ain't you ain't done him. nothing. You just throw the stick at him, as far as I'm concerned. I said, well, maybe we'll. So we go back in there looking. I'm talking about we scan the whole place. We look, look. We can't find him. So we leave. Well, he's a little disappointed. So I go get him an ice cream cone. <laughs> 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 what a dummy. <laughs> so that makes things better, you know, when you got a little kid. <laughs> so hey. we leave. We come back a uh, day or two later. Going to go back out and hunt it because I saw some – that's a fly. I told you there'd be a fly in the house whenever – that's how you're going to make But um, we go out there, and a couple, two or three days later, and turkey's gobbling back there. Well, here comes two turkeys out. One of them's got yeah. old skin hanging down. His beard. He's not saying nothing. I'm not yeah, he come out. The with, other one come out. And I don't know if you killed the other, the other one. The other one was gobbling. And Talon was, I was on with the, us. I Talon could see was the on bird the gun the that of, day. I could see the bird at the end of the road, oh, yeah. and I could see his old thing just hanging down. Well, like that. we was on I that. I thought it was the arrow. We was, on that, we was on that same. <laughs> what are you laughing at? We was on that same logging road, but not in the field this time. We was back there on the logging road. And there was another bird with the bird I shot, and he was gobbling, gobbling good. So Talon was on the gun. We put the decoy up out there in the logging road. Me and Talon was on the side of the road, and Dad was about 10 yards behind us calling. <clears throat> and I was up there with Talon. And, uh, of course, we heard him coming around the corner drumming all that stuff. Well, here come one bird. Well, then here come the other bird behind it. Well, the other bird, the first bird that was gobbling that Talon was after that was gobbling, he was strutting, doing his thing. There was another gobbler behind him that was standing straight up wasn't strutting, wasn't gobbling, wasn't doing nothing, and had that piece of skin flapped over, and it looked like an arrow. It, it looked like a piece of skin that was just it flapped was over, skin hanging beard. straight down. It looked like it was that long sticking yeah. out over us. I said, <laughs> I said this, uh, what did I say? I can't even remember. I don't what. Talon remember. said something about. I said, there's something wrong with that turkey. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got something sticking out of yeah. it. And, and that Dad, idiot had shot it Dad the Dad looks before. over at me. <laughs> <laughs> At least we know he's still alive. <laughs> he shot it the day before. So, look, but I'm glad we saw him, but I don't know if he made it or not. But, yeah, I shot him with my bow, but I didn't kill him with my bow. So, well, I've I, tried I told since. Him, I said, from now on, when you shoot a turkey, if he's sideways, consider where his wing is attached to his body and shoot him in the wing where it's attached to the body. Mm -hmm. Or if he's going away in his tail feathers, shoot him straight up the butt, up the spine. I said, you'll kill him. Mm -hmm. There are certain so he, points where you He learned some yep. stuff, but, you know, I I don't need to be sitting there telling them what to do all the time. Let them learn their own mistakes. <laughs> so, I can't have. wait till we get into the deer situation and you start asking him deer questions. Because every deer I've ever killed, they put me on. <laughs> Every one of them on my wall, he takes credit name for it. Name one that he, we didn't. Well, now. Let me just go ahead and clear this up. Um, if I'm not mistaken, 
I think it's your camera that they get the deer pictures on, and you let them know when the deer are there. That, that, is, right? that, that has happened a lot. <laughs> now of you opened up a now can I, of worms. Now I'm not even a cameraman. I don't care nothing about cameras. I don't care about using them, whatever. But that, you know, I do say, hey, there's a good shooter over here at so and so. You need to go do that. He's doing this. He's doing that. So I do do that, and I'm waiting to hear the story where the one that he killed that we didn't tell him about. <laughs> <laughs> you want to elaborate? Well, <laughs> Wait, hurry up. The, the only one on my wall. <laughs> the only one on my wall. The only one on my wall Come is on. the uh, the Caleb one. That's the only one. We didn't even know about him, though. So no, I just that, went, and that was a fluke. I shot him one day. I went hunting one dad, day that year and dad, shot that deer. Did I not? But the seven yeah. point, I killed. I didn't know who what was going on. We can yeah. all do it. Our whole family can. The, uh, yeah, the other two deer, the one that I killed, the very first big buck I killed was the big seven, the palmated <laughs> seven that I got on the wall. Mm -hmm. I killed with him. Uh, didn't I say shoot? Yeah, but <laughs> <Did not say shoot. laughs> I mean, you're standing there like a. I mean, like uh, he's he's I said, shoot so. The deer. <laughs> there's a story right there. So we get there, we going in. It's raining. I stay behind him. We're going in. Now I was a lot younger. I wasn't 23 on this one. <laughs> no, uh, but I was a lot younger. So we go in. Well, you wasn't even old enough to drive because you was <clears> riding <throat> with me. So yeah, he was probably 12, 13, something. Like that. So we go in, and we got a shooting house on a food plot. We go in, we get to the shooting house, and it's raining. It's freezing cold. I think Alabama football is fixing to come on that night. We was going to go back and eat it with some friends. Their friends was coming over. We just wanted to go hunting before, before dark to see if we could do something. So we get to the shooting house, and right before I climb the ladder, Dad's already halfway up the ladder to hold the door open for me to get up and climb up and hand him my gun and all that. He's, I told Dad, I said, Dad, Dad. He turns around and looks at me. I said, there's a buck in the food plot. Well, the buck had come out off the right side of the food plot and come and trotting across the food plot. Dad looks around the <clears throat> shooting house. He said, that's a good buck. You need to shoot him. Dad gets his gun out. He's got a gun because it's rut. Dad gets his gun, and he's holding it kind of like this, just watching, you know. He's watching, and he's telling me, you better shoot him. You better shoot him because he's, he's, he ain't eating. He's steadily making yeah. his way across that food plot. <clears throat> he said, you better shoot him. You better shoot him. Not that he was going to shoot him, but he was. if I didn't shoot You're him and he's time. right there in the edge of the woods, somebody better shoot him because he's a good buck. Yeah. And anyways, uh, he said, you better shoot him. Well, I was down there the whole time, which he didn't know. <clears throat> I was trying to get through the yopon bushes or find a hole in there to get on him. So I did. I had a little 243. I got through the yopon bushes, found a hole in there, and I pulled, squeezed the trigger off, and deer ran about 10 yards in the food plot and fell over in the water, and we got on up in the stand and... Uh, Dad's like, let's sit here and wait. It was still early, 3 o'clock. Let's sit here and wait until dark, see if we can get another one to come by, which we didn't. But um, that was the story on that one. So I was with him when I killed that one. But we'll tell the other stories here in a minute. I got to pee. But <laughs> Can you say that in this stuff? Is this for real? <laughs> Golly. What the heck? So now's the perfect opportunity for us to talk. Yeah. You can actually say what you want to without – him correct is that not the deer he shot when did he shoot the one in the jaw oh that's the same food plot different what? deer yeah, jason i don't think i know about this jason shot through jason shot one in the jaw and it dropped his head and went across the food plot and then he shot it two more times he ain't told me about this one he he, he didn't shoot it no more times i think i ended up getting a gun and shooting the deer i ain't sure he, he missed it didn't he more times? well the deer was out in the food plot same food plot same shooting house was up in bring the mike a little closer there oh, i'm sorry was uh up in the shooting house same food plot same shooting house uh a deer come out a buck a good buck he come out and uh, he was eating around the edge of the food plot briar leaves around the edge of the food plot and uh, so he was quartering away from us, about like that, and us right here. And uh, Jansen decides he's going to shoot him. So I'm up there with him, and uh, he pulls the gun up and gets it out the window. Now, we got a rest up there. I mean, it's not like freehanding. So he pulls the gun up and gets it on the deer. I said, well, you shoot him when they're ready. I put my fingers in my ears because I know it's going to be loud. I said, you shoot him whenever you get ready take your time i said everything's fine naturally walking him through it 
<laughs> I hope you get a kidney stone. <laughs> yeah, I hope he does too. <laughs> so well, we're up there, and uh, naturally the deer is quartering. Well, he puts it right on the heart where you're supposed to shoot her, right behind the shoulder. Hadn't checked his gun, hadn't done anything. It was early in the season because there's briar leaves still out there and all. So he fires off, pow. Well, I see the deer just snatch up and look at me and his chin's hanging down here. <laughs> the bottom jaw is just hanging. He shot the whole this face is off the This is gruesome. I mean, this probably don't need to be put on the air. But I'm talking about his jaw just hanging down there. I said, what the heck did you do? I said, shoot him again. Pow. I said, shoot him. Pow. He's firing off shot after shot. I so the deer runs across the food plot instead of going into the woods, I guess. So I think I told him, I said, give me your gun. And I grabbed his gun and shot, and it just rolled the deer. But he wasn't dead. So it well, wasn't the scope off or anything I like think that? The scope was off. It was, was off? This? It was off. Okay. When was this, last year? <laughs> <laughs> Get them headphones on. You're going to want to get him on. It was about the same time we killed that other deer. But uh, the yeah. scope was definitely off. It was dead on height-wise, but off to the right about six or eight inches because the deer was quartering. And just at that ankle, whatever it was off, was he had his head down about heart level, and it clipped him right there at the back of the jaw. Well, it did. It just broke his jaw, and it just fell straight down. His nose looked like it was that long and about that big around like a – Pinocchio just sticking out because his jaw was hanging down here. So I grabbed a gun and shoot. When I, I when I first shot him, we thought it was a good shot because Dad said, "Good shot." Because Dad always he would look he would watch with binoculars to mm. see if you hit him good. Soon as I shot, boom! Dad says, "Good shot," and he's watching with binoculars because I guess it hurt the deer because it hit him in the jaw. The deer bowed up and buckled up like a good shot. And uh, <laughs> anyways, he drug his face across the ground. When the deer looked up, this is what it looked like. I said, what in the world? Dad, Dad said, give me the gun. You shot him in the jaw. And I handed him the gun, and he put it on him. But but no, he, I think you shot him a couple of times. I he, may have. He run across. I said, but he never stopped. Yeah. How I said, did give you me hit the gun him? Quick. I just cripple. I I just put it dead center of the deer. I just Body. wanted to cripple him up, yep. and I was close enough that it was went off right enough that it hit him in yeah. the shoulder or mm -hmm. whatever. Well, he fell over. Well, we was out of bullets. I think we had to go back to the gun. We shot seven times at that deer, not knowing our scope was off. We shot seven times at that deer. Our Dad, scope wasn't off now. <laughs> his scope was <laughs> off. <laughs> my, our well, scope wasn't off. We just had his gun. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm saying my scope. On yeah. the gun that we were shooting. Not knowing two, it was off. We yeah. didn't know that that scope was off, and we shot at that deer seven times and ran out of shells, but we didn't know the scope was off. We just thought, well, good God, what is going on, you know? Uh, but Dad shot, or I shot a few, twice, I think, or chucked another shell and shot. I missed him. He kept going across. The worst thing that could have happened is that deer would have, would have got off somewhere and couldn't eat nothing and starved to death, which would have been terrible. Mm -hmm. So Dad took the gun. He shoots. Hits him somewhere in the back, and the deer hits the ground. And so he's kind of crippled up. Well, that's good enough. So Dad tries to shoot again. We shot seven times. We even got out there halfway of the food plot and shot and missed him. Well, Dad says, we out of shells. Dad has to go all the way, probably a quarter of a cotton-picking mile, back to At the least. paved road, get his get the truck. And he drove the truck out there to the, uh, to the food plot, and he got up on it and shot it and killed it and put it out of its misery. Loaded the truck up, but seven times I shot him in the jaw the first time. Dad shot him, crippled him, but we shot at him seven times, run out of bullets, had to go back and get the box get of shells. You didn't get that one mounted, did you? I thought you did. No, he looked like he, he was just <laughs> <laughs> he was a uh, just a little old. He, he was, was just a little a, old scrub. He was a good deer. He was a good one a for a twelve kid. or thirteen year old kid to shoot. Yeah, but that was just a freak accident. But yeah. was that one that you I, killed? He the, said, "I don't know what happened," so I took his rifle and shot. The him. other one you killed exactly was bigger. The palmated one was bigger than that. Yeah. That oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Was, yeah. So have you ever missed a deer like you missed turkeys? Yeah. That, what are you talking about? That was uh. his deer story that we just told you that he missed. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because that the, the gun that deer. That's cause the gun was off. Shot, oh. Shotgun's oh. rarely off. That's, no, I missed the deer. There's no excuse to miss with a you shotgun. Miss deer? I missed the deer. He, he misses, misses the, the deer. I missed the turkeys. What deer have you shot at and missed? Shoot. Name one. He just started killing them last year. 
<laughs> okay, we'll tell this story. That's a fact. That is true. But we'll tell this story so Dad and and Dad can pick up when I give it to him. But uh, when we were younger, I went with uh, – we were down uh, hunting with some people from church. Uh, big farm. They had some places to go and uh, had some good spots. So they put Talon. Talon was the youngest kid with us. And uh, I think I went and – some more kids went and whatever. Talon was the youngest kid, so they put him in a good spot. Well, we get down there. Dad went with Talon that day. And uh, they get in the shooting house or whatever. They're sitting there. Well, good daylight. And I think it was three bucks, a six point, eight point, point, and a spike. Three bucks, yeah. And uh, Talon, that's, that's, this would be Talon's first deer ever killed. Talon's got the 243. He goes out there, and three bucks walk out. Decent little eight point. They said, you know, Dad said it was a decent little eight point. It was a shooter for a kid, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I was and, probably uh, eight, somewhere around there. Seven yeah. or eight, something like that. Probably seven, something like that. Yeah. Good little eight point comes out. Basket rack six point comes out. The eight and the six would have been a good one, and then the spike come out. <laughs> Talon shot at all three, ain't hit one yet. Yeah. <laughs> Two, four, six, and eight. Missed them all. <laughs> he ain't hit one yet. He ain't cut eye nor hair. Yeah. But, uh,. I think Talon, he he was a lot like you. Uh, I dang, don't be throwing him under the bus. No, I'm saying when he no, was don't younger. Don't compare me to Talon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm when, better than him. When Talon was younger, <laughs> Talon was more out to want to wait for a buck yeah. to shoot his first one, and I was more out to when I went with Dad. Gee. I, I ain't no. I don't know how he's still even alive. How many deer he's drug out for me? I that's shot my fault. I, I ruined him because. I'd always tell him, let's wait and see if a buck comes out, and he could have shot a doe or something. He kept him interested. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't as much as interested in deer hunting as what he was turkey hunting and bird hunting because he could shoot. So I kind of ruined him as he was coming up. I should have let him kill a lot more deer at a younger age. Where this one, I did because it was my first child, and, you know, if something come out there, you know, I'd say, yeah, you can shoot it. Yeah. Yeah, and I was uh, taught from a young age, 130 class or don't pull the trigger pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I was. I was like, yeah. He's still waiting on the 130. I, I, was, I was sitting there like this in the tree stand the whole time. He'd be looking at me at eight point be out there, and I'd be saying. <laughs> so was your first one a he buck or doe or what? Not big enough, huh? So was your first deer a buck or doe? Or no. How would it work out? It was a doe. I think. It was a day. It, it was, was a day. day. Yeah, he I finally shot a day. Yeah. Finally pulled the trigger. Then, then I shot a basket rack. Second, what was the seven, seven point? point. Mm -hmm. Then I've shot a doe and other deer between them, but no. And then a buck, and then I mean Houdini I, is that the first one you got mounted? Yeah, that's my first rack yeah. buck. Probably, like, I wasn't big any buck. none of that other stuff. <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. It, none of the other one was no. like, big enough to near shoot. Big enough is that one? Uh -huh. No, but yeah. hey, uh, <laughs> this one right here. I had some property up at the schoolhouse in Elba that I hunted for years. And uh, I'd take him, and we, we had a food plot pushed up. We called the Jansen Hole. And uh, I did that. He liked it. And I'd go sit with him in the ladder stand. He shot a deer. <coughs> but then the next day, you know. I think uh, I shot two deer. No, and you the, shot one. I think if if this story's going where I think it's going, which I think I know what you're talking it's about, it's going to the truth. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I shot one. Maybe a day within the next uh, within the next couple of days, I shot another one, and then what I think you're going to is then, you know, I'll let you tell the rest of the story. Right, so the first day he was up there in the ladder stand or whatever, uh, I think it was a little uh, six point coming. Six out point or something. Six yeah. point. No, coming. it was a. It was a it was an eight point, but he had one side of his rack was busted off. Okay, well he shot it and killed it. So well, six point. Yeah, he wanted to thank you. He <laughs> wanted to go back and hunt. You know, I want to go back by myself. I want to go back by myself. Oh. I said okay, so I took him and I dropped him off and I said okay. I don't know if you had a cell phone. Said text me whenever you. No, you used to say come up there. He said I'd be there. He said at dark get down. And I'm talking about walking in. I drove yeah, you up there. And yeah, you drove in, me in. You'd, you'd drop me said, off. I'd walk in, and then you'd say, I'm going to come up here. When I took the horn one time, I'll be at the road if you're not already at the road when I get there. Yeah. So if you come to the end of the road, I'll be there to pick you up after dark. Yeah. So he had killed that one deer, so he wanted to go by himself. So I let him walk in there. He's, what, 10, Probably, 12? Something yeah, like something that, like that. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So he walks in. It's just ladder foot, about 12, 15 foot off the ground or whatever, long eight foot wide, hundred yard long stretch, uh 
deer crossed it. So I let him go. Well, the next day, I think it's the very next day, mm -hmm. he wanted to go back. After he got out of school, Daddy, I want to take me over to Jensen. I'll drop me off. I said, okay. So I take him back. I drop him off. I, something happened. I don't know if I was there hunting or whatever. Well, he kills another deer. <laughs> but this time it's full point. <laughs> this, it's full point. I'm yeah. Like, what the heck? So I go in there and I drag <laughs> the deer. <laughs> I drag the deer. Now, we get, we got plenty of deer. Hey. We don't need any more deer. So he comes back the next day, the third day, third day, three days in a <laughs> row. Daddy, I want to go back to the Jansen hole. I said, listen to me, son, let's talk. I said, you done killed two deer two days in a row. I said, you want to go back to the Jansen hole? I said, don't shoot nothing unless it's a big buck, whatever. So this time, I decided instead of leaving and going somewhere, I would go down there on the creek and climb up on my climbing stand with my bow and arrow. So I go down in there. We had cell phones because I remember calling. I called mm -hmm. you. Southern I Links, Southern I think. Southern Links. Yeah. Beep, beep. You know. <laughs> so I go I down those. there and I climb. I get my ladder, my stand out the back of the truck. I go down in there. We're there 15 minutes, 20 minutes, because I just had time to go there and put my tree stand on a tree. Got, it, got in and then made two little rungs going up the tree. Bye, y'all. I'm talking about this just right there. I said, good gracious. I must have scared a good one to him coming in here. So I, I'm thinking, you know, I'm waiting. I, I start coming back down the tree. I get down to the bottom tree. I get off of it. My southern link goes, beep, beep. I said, hey. I said, uh, did you get him? Well, he's crying. Yeah, I'm talking about he's just, <laughs> I'm talking about. And he was 17. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's this was last year. Yeah, yeah he's crying. I said, <laughs> Daddy. I said, what is it? Are you all right? Hey. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm all to tell you. I said, are you okay? Are you all right? Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, I accidentally shot a spike. <laughs> I said, you accidentally <laughs> shot a spike. I didn't <laughs> so I go in there and sure enough, he's killed a spike. So he goes from an eight to a four to a spike. I ain't trying to be hateful. I'm just telling some stories. No, no. Two. I'm saying like good oh, stories. Good stories. stories of big deer. Oh yeah, uh, because you know that was back. That was stories back when I was young. Don't tell them where we killed them. <laughs> uh, Don't tell them where we killed them. John had a. There was a guy named John. He was a farmer. He had a pen. No, <laughs> just playing. No, we we killed. Dad killed some good some good deer, uh, and which I was along for the ride on that. But I was well. I was way older, hunting by myself, doing my own thing. Could go and drive up there, do my own thing by myself. But we still went pretty often together uh because we would have to make about an hour hour and a half drive up and uh but <clears throat> you're getting a radius about where we're at that's enough yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't <it's> south yeah, <laughs> no. you, yeah. Uh, uh, drive up south yeah <laughs> <laughs> drive up south uh you'd be surprised at how many people uh in florida say hey we're gonna come down and visit i said all right come on down yeah um We've been around the world to hear this story. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> so we went up. Uh, we went up there, and Dad, <coughs> Talon, he was a little younger. didn't He didn't make the trip. But we went up there. We used to go up there and stay a couple of days at the time. This time we just went up there for the morning. Uh, and most of the time we went on Saturdays. We'd always Dad had always wanted to get back and watch the Alabama football game or something like that. So we he likes to go. He likes to kill deer in the mornings. Mm -hmm. That way he's got all day to fool with them, yeah, and it's I not like just at night till ten o'clock at night you're cleaning a deer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, anyways, we, we and it, I don't know what it is, but I'm getting there, and I hadn't figured it out yet. But I've killed some good ones here in the past few years. I've killed some good ones with my bow, with my rifle, everything. I don't know what it is, but old sport here has got a knack for killing something or seeing something just about every cotton picking time he goes. He ki he sees a big buck, don't shoot, wasn't big enough, kills a big buck, acts like it was a spike, never gets excited, just, eh, he's all right, you know. Anyway, so we get up there. He sets me in the, we had a place called the Louisiana Plot. He puts me in the Louisiana Plot. It's a long shot and all that. Good spot. We've seen bucks in it. We've seen good shooters in it. Dad says, I'm going to go on down. I'm going to get in my climbing stand on down past you, past the creek down there. He said, I'll hear you shoot. You'll hear me shoot. Whatever. 
He said, but what I want you to do is when I text you and we get out of the stand, he said, I got a longer walk than you. I'm going to walk by you this time. He said, but you go get the truck and come down there to me. I said, okay. Well, daylight, com- daylight comes, and uh, I heard something behind me. And I had a small buck come out in front of me going into the plot, and I'm sitting on a, a row of pines. And Dad told me before I got there, he said, now watch behind you because sometimes them bucks will come out of them pines behind you. And they'll come right out there from behind you, and they'll come right out there into that food plot. They'll check that food plot, and then they'll go on about their business, but they're checking for does. I said, all right. So heard something behind me. Little buck comes out, walks on past me, goes on down off, off into the pines while I hear something again behind me. Well, this deer didn't come all the way out. I'm looking out of the corner of my eye, and all I see at the bottom of my tree, probably about 15 yards behind me, could have shot him with a bow, but I, was, I didn't want to move or nothing to scare him off. So I'm looking... And I can see out of the corner of my eye, all I see is a deer's head and a rack. And he was a good deer. And he, I could see a rack just moving up and down. He'd look sideways, and he'd look this way, and he'd look that way. I think he could smell me. I think he knew something wasn't right. That's why he didn't want to come on out there. He was a more mature buck than that little old four-point or whatever come on out. Mm-hmm. So he turns, and he goes on back into the woods. I never got a shot. He looks and, like he'd about to pass out. No, no, hey. Yes, you need to take some eye water in your eyes. It's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think he's in on the story. Yeah, he was daydreaming. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we I, got, I didn't make this story. Yeah, right, we got to go talk ahead. about call I didn't mean to call interrupt you, but I looked something. over at him, and he looked like he had Down syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> we got to cut that out. We're going to get canceled. <laughs> yeah, uh, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> Zoom in on that face. <laughs> I'm not cutting any of this. <laughs> what a Go ahead. Idiot. I'm so, uh, anyways, well, I saw a big buck. Well, about <laughs> about 30 lie. minutes after that buck leaves me, I didn't get a shot on nothing. It's bark, it's bark busting cold that morning. So it was a good morning. That's about the only time Dad really cares to go is if the conditions are right and there's good bucks in the in the area. If there's not, if that's not the case, he's probably not going to make the trip. Now this is pre-camera hunting. Yeah, we had no, no clue. Cameras yeah, out, no. Dad's just going by what he's already seen in person up mm-hmm. there, which was good bucks. Uh, so, anyways, about thirty minutes after my buck, he disappears and goes on about his business. I hear boom. Well, I knew it was Dad because it just rattled in my tree. Boom! I heard another shot. Boom! I heard another shot. I said, "Golly, what is he doing? Just shooting up the world? I mean, what's going on?" Well. I called him about 10 minutes after I hear the shots. I called him. I texted him. I said, uh, what's going on? Did you, did, was, that, was that you that shot? He said, yeah, it was me. He said, whenever you get a chance, just go up there. He said, go ahead and finish your hunt out. Whenever you get a chance, just go up there and get the truck and pull on down here. He said, I shot a little old, little old bitty deer. And he, I said, text back, tick, 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 tick. A little deer? You know, like, what are you doing? He said, just go get the truck. And, you know, it's, he's a... He's a little deer. Just come down here and pick me up. But finish Actually, your hunt. I think I told you I shot a doe. It may have been a doe or it may have been a spike or something yeah. you told me. You you said, yeah, it's a little old spike. It's a little old bitty deer. He, he's not, he's not much him to, to stay him. hunting. Yeah. Uh, well, I got on down. I went and got the truck. I started going down there to him. I get there. When I turn the corner, he, he's hunting on a long food plot. <laughs> when I turn the corner... Now, the grass, the deer had not eat the grass all the way down, so the grass was pretty high. It was late in the season, you know, mm-hmm. and we did our food plots up there right. We put all kinds of stuff on them to make them grow, get green, all that. So it's up there. When I turn the corner, I go out across there on the truck. He says, pull it all the way down to me when you get here. I turn the corner there. I'm probably, I'm from here to the neighbor's house 150 yards off, and all I see is rack hanging up over them, over the grass. I said, Jesus. <laughs> he's killed a monster i said i thought you said it was that little old bitty deer he said he's a pretty good one ain't he i said a good one i said we're gonna leave the tailgate down on the way home with this one <laughs> he said no we're not no we're not we're not gonna do that we're not well we get him in the truck <laughs> we put him in the truck and dad has a he had a latch on the back of his truck kind of like what you got on yours taylor you know mm-hmm. to keep your stuff dry and all that the horns was too big too big to shut the latch on the truck. I said, uh huh. I said, nice. now we got to ride home with it. <laughs> and the whole way he was hating it the whole time, you know, because he don't care what who he don't care who knows who what he kills. He no, he thinks it's cool to show and he thinks it's cool not to show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He likes I, to hide it. Oh, I like I'm to show. Like, I want to stop at this convenience store 
Yeah, and he'll come in with like three Mountain Dews. I said, "Well, you got three Mountain Dews." Yeah, I stopped at every convenience <laughs> store. <on the> <laughs> I'm the kind of guy. I'm the I'm the guy that everybody like. Yeah, you're right around town with that one. You know, I, uh, yeah, I may enjoy it for a little while. Dad's more like, let's get home, let's get it cleaned up, let's watch the Alabama game when we get to the house. You know, he's a good mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Uh, ain't don't even like. I don't even think we even got a picture of Dad with that deer. Don't, don't even. Remember. We don't even have a picture of that deer. He just threw it in the back of the truck, and the dang horns wouldn't even fit in the back of the truck. We couldn't shut the tailgate and couldn't shoot nut. Couldn't I shut nothing. I didn't mount him until last year. Didn't mount him till oh, last those, year. Buddy. My gosh. Don't care. Biggest one. Was I've it hiding in the freezer the whole time, or didn't have no. a hide? I you just have to video it. Of you it. have to video it and then add it to it so they can see what. Because yeah. it's right yeah. there. It's I, in there. I, but it's on a it's on I, a doe's I ain't gonna body say who now. Who mounted it? But they'll tell you it's a terrible. Mount. It, it's I'm a terrible. Gonna, mount. I don't want to yeah. criticize nobody. They put it on a doe's mount. Well, it was probably a small buck. But the deer probably weighed two twenty. He was he was a big deer. Yeah, big deer. Uh, but the problem is he may would have got it mounted that year, but. The I think uh, maybe a week before he killed that deer, he had already killed one even bigger than that one. The week before he killed that one, scored bigger. Scored bigger. No, it don't look bigger. It don't look bigger. They're but look it scored neck bigger. Neck. Yeah, but he had killed that one a week before, and it was at the taxidermist. So Dad was like, "Well, I'm not gonna pay five hundred dollars for both of them to be mounted. So I'll cut the horns enough. off this one, keep that one at the taxidermist." He European. But enough. like I said, I think we got a picture of the first one he killed. He got mounted of him. Mom's got it somewhere, but we didn't even take a picture of this other one. Now, if I'd killed this one, and I was loving, the only thing I was hoping the whole way home is, like, people would be like, I bet that guy in that passenger seat right here killed that one. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm <laughs> And Dad's sitting here thinking, and I'm telling Dad, he's looking, that guy's looking, that guy's looking, that's good, yeah. hey, that guy's looking, they're he thinks we're good. Yeah. They're out there at the truck. We, yeah. we went they to talking little, about us, we went by, they talking about we us, We went you know? to a little <laughs> restaurant that's... To eat breakfast before we come yeah. home, yeah, people were standing and they was people looking, was looking, walking up at the back of the truck. He, Where'd y'all the whole get time? He wasn't even eating. They're at the truck. They're looking at it. Dude. <laughs> they think they like. They like that. That's a big deer, Danny. <laughs> he don't like all that stuff, but he's sitting there like this the whole time, <laughs> trying not to <laughs> grin. You know, I, I'm laughing at him because he's making a big. <laughs> this is the most I've seen him laugh his whole life. <laughs> oh, this is the way I am inside. It's just hard to come out with you two around. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. But, yeah, so we killed that one, and, and we can show that to you, but you can show that one on, on camera, too. But, uh, yeah, he just got a knack for it. So is it, is it back in that little corner room where you used to have? Right there. Right, 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 right it's, here with Talon. It's in Talon's room now, the middle one, yeah. Which we're going to move them all out to the newborn. Right, I'm going to close it in. And here. getting all the people's African animals. Yeah. We're going to uh, put it in the newborn, my too. My deer, wow. his deer, my turkey, or my turkey yeah. stuff, his turkeys. He actually has a turkey that's in the Elba Elementary School library yeah. that's about as about there's a box about as big as this coffee table here mm-hmm. and it's in snow strutting. Going stepping across the barbed wire fence. A barbed wire fence in snow. In the snow. Going across it like a coffee neat. table is pretty neat. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's in the Elba Elementary School Library. But, uh, either way I killed that deer. Yeah, killed that deer and And the they, reason that I shot so many times wasn't just like I was a terrible shot. Yeah. I was sitting in my tree stand just like this, pretty high up. And uh that there's a hill and I've I y'all y'all probably know all this stuff, but when it's cold weather you wanna hunt on the sunny side as the sun comes up in the morning times because the deer they get cold too. So they'll lay on the sunny side of a hill. So I was sitting on the sunny side of the hill because the sun coming up at the east, and I was sitting right here, and the sun would hit that, and then they would bed out there, and I could watch them. Uh, in the evening times, you have a tendency to hunt on the shadow side of things because the deer will want to be in the darks as they come out to go in there to eat because it's getting dark. And uh, so I was sitting up there, and I glance off to my right coming out of a thicket probably about 100 yards away, well, here he comes, walking straight towards me. Well, he's off to my right, so I'm I'm gonna have to shoot him left-handed. So I get my gun, and he's coming. He gets at about 50 yards, and I get my gun over there and get it about on him. Not I ain't got my head down or anything like that. Well, next thing I know, I hear turkeys up on top of the hill, 200 yards off. There's a road that goes up there. I hear those turkeys yelping and carrying on well next thing i know the turkeys just pick up and fly right over the treetops they were small pines about probably chest, chest high. high yeah 
and they come right over the top of the trees, about 13 of them, and loop down and just pick back up and just land in the trees right there around me. Just cleared the top of the deer. Yeah, well, it, the deer it probably smelled me, but it couldn't make me out, didn't know what to do. But when those turkeys done that, all of a sudden he just stops and just starts looking and he bolts back up the hill towards where the turkeys are. So now I'm left-handed trying to find him in the scope, and I shoot, pow. When I do, I don't know if I clipped him the first time. Well, he spun around. I, well, I did. He spun around, and I see he was kind of broke down a little bit. Well, he's now That's pretty impressive, though. below the trees because he's right. kind of crippled down, trying to get back to that thicket, mm -hmm. more like crawling. And I'm trying to find him in my scope left-handed, and I pow when I'd see him. Well, the third shot, I killed him again. I mean, I hit him, and he was just laying right there. That's what took place on mm -hmm. the, the shooting all that stuff. I would have he, mounted him just for me shooting him left-handed on the run. Yeah. Well, that, I mean. that biggest deer I got in there, I shot him left-handed. I would have mounted him if I'd have shot him right-handed, and it would have been a – they, the easiest that, hunt I've just, ever been on. It's probably a one. I don't know. I'd say he's yeah, probably one. He's probably it's a, it's, he's it's probably it's how you score it. Because I hear some of these boys now mm. they scoring deer. Oh, he's a one forty. So if he's if he's if their deers are one forty, he's one forty. But I I fear he's in the one thirties. Probably mid one thirties, something like that. Some of these guys are scoring deer, and I know he's way bigger than some of their. If deer. that one we saw the other day scored a one fifty something. These guys that say they're scored 140s straight up line. Because that dude, that That's teen why guy that we saw. His deer, his deer and us getting them scored has, is why I've always downscaled my deer. Because the deer I've killed so far ain't. Nowhere near the size he is. Well, I don't know. Kicker kicker is going to be a good deer. He Kicker is running the same race as his deer if he wouldn't have broke that back G2 off. But that's why I say kicker's probably high 120s maybe low 130s because i see his i see one. his deer and i score everybody else's deer compared to his deer because his scored his biggest one scored like a 133 134 something like that and i was thinking golly if you have to kill if that's a 130 something these guys is killing 200 inch deer they're monsters i mean like they look like elk they if are. those are 130s so that's why I always scale down. I'm like, there's no way that one can score to 140 if mm -hmm. this one scored to 130. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But What's I'd like to get them. We went to a taxidermist not too long, uh, not a taxidermist, uh, a meat processor not too long ago, and he brought out some uh, that some guys had killed around this area, and he said uh, he brought out a 10-point. 10 10-point 10 was probably maybe a little outside the ears, probably 16, 17-inch inside spread. I knew he had 10 points, so that probably helps you score a little bit. But he told us that he was scoring in the 153. Mm. Me, and, me and Dad left and was like, uh. <laughs> he's a, I said, he's a the, state scorer. Yeah. Supposedly. He's, you know, a, he's a, a certified. He can legit score the deer. Person. So. But first thing I told Dad, I was like, we got to get yours rescored. I want to know if that's the truth or if it's not the truth, one or the other. Yeah. Um. But, uh, but yeah, Dad's got an act for – finding them killing them but so i would like to ask this i don't know how long the podcast has been going but um how did you come up hunting your family always hunted or is it something that you started no. doing uh, how did you learn i guess uh, my dad we he was a fisherman and we fished every day uh when i got out of school we'd go fishing if it was on a saturday we was floating p river fishing and I fished my whole life till I was up to about 16 years old. Never deer hunted. If it was winter time, we quail hunted. They was quail back then. We would he would come home, get home about seven o'clock in the morning. We'd get the quail dog. We'd go quail hunt to two or three o'clock in the evening. Come home, clean the birds. And when we fished, it wasn't like nowadays. We actually come home and we may have 60 bluegill. Well, we didn't fillet. You scaled every fish and you eat it, and so we done all that. And then uh, some guys up north of Elba, uh, they deer dog hunted, and uh, 
I joined up there. Back then, it wasn't a club. You, uh, you didn't, well, it was a club, but you didn't have to pay. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started hunting up there with them. Uh, my cousin and me, Buddy Mandarin, we would ride up there. I don't think Buddy was even old enough to drive that time. I think he was 15. He may have drove, but he probably didn't have a license. We'd go up there and dog hunt with them. And uh, naturally, you know, young guys out there dog hunting with some older men. They got their dogs. You know, they're going to put you off out here in the middle of a hay field and say, you don't never know where the deer is going to cross, but then they always kill the deer because they know right where they're going to cross mm-hmm. 90% of the time. You know, they're going at the creek crossing or this, that, and other. They put you up at the uh, – clay hill or something like that <laughs> deer's got to jump off a 30 foot bank you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're sitting there thinking i hear the dogs you know that this may be it but it's not put you in the gar hole yeah so uh then i got on up and started getting some dogs and dog hunted and i would with dog hunt then i'd go get in a tree stand i didn't know anything about deer hunting it was just trial and error for years uh not like nowadays where you got cameras and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You had to read sign stuff. You you know, if you a good buck was in the area, you'd take your shotgun shell. If it was a three-inch shell, you'd lay it down there and say, that's a buck. That's, you know, it wasn't, wasn't like it is nowadays. And you had to get in there and look for uh, deer droppings and uh, rubs, grounds, and scrapes, rubs and- scrapes, trails, stuff like that. Uh, and just eventually got to where I was seeing and killing better deer and more deer uh, out of a tree stand than I was dog hunting. Now, dog hunting's got its rush as far as hearing the dogs and all that, but as far as killing big bucks, you'll see more big bucks killed. That's classified a big buck, you know, out of a deer stand or a climbing stand or something like that, Mm -hmm. so... I got into that and just got away from the dog hunt. How long have you been turkey hunting? Since I was about 16. Because I was dog hunting up there with them guys, and they started talking about some turkeys being in behind a piece of property of an old church up there. And they told me, go up there and try it. So I went, and some of them had killed some turkeys. Some of them was Is that where you heard 40? 28. 28. That was later on in life. But it was, it was at that same place? 29. 29, Same got, place, though, behind the church? No, it was on Father Up. Mm. It was at a place called Double Bridges and uh, up in Wilkinstown. I had some property. My cousin's granddaddy leased the property for his cows, and it's a long walk, probably three-quarters of a mile to a mile walk back to the back of the property, and it runs all down alongside Big Creek. And I went down there and... Uh, one evening and climbed my tree stand. It was like the last day, next to last day of season. And uh, got down there, climbed my tree. It was kind of warm. And uh, under the trees over on the creek on the right-hand side, it cows would eat under there, so it was wide open. So you could, you know, easy walking. So I got up there and climbed a tree and across the neighbor's property, which was uh, my cousin's granddaddy's brother's property it was plowed up i saw some turkeys coming out over a hill and they come and there was a barbed wire fence between it and the cow pasture that i was in then it was across it was big creek in the hardwoods well i counted 29 longbeards cross pitch over that thing and go to roost so the next morning, I come down that evening and went and left, come back. I was going to go back the next morning. I think it was the last day of deer season. It was kind of warm and humid, foggy. And uh, I was sitting in a tree stand, crack of daylight, owl hooted, turkey gobbled. Well, owl hooted again, turkey gobbled. Pretty soon, I don't know if it was all 29, but it was a bunch of them. I'm talking about it would be... Ow, 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 ow. Just as far down that water, that <laughs> thing as you could see, they would turkeys would gobble, and it would go like it was a wave. It would start here and just ow, all the way down it. Then it'd get quiet after a while, crow it, and hit start up here, and it'd go all the way down it. And uh, so I decided I'd go turkey hunting there the next season. 
and I went in there, and uh, it was, like I said, I was down on the creek. It had rained, and the creek is just flat where cows had been, but there's little dips where there'd be water probably 10, 15, 20 yards wide between it and the creek, then the cow pasture. I was about halfway down in there walking in there. I didn't have time to go anywhere else. When you walk in there, you're committed. Mm -hmm. So I heard a turkey gobble, Jake, half gobble. I said, fuck, it's a Jake. You know, I don't, I don't want to go in here, but I might as well go in here and just piddle around because I ain't got time to go back. It'll be daylight. So I go down in there, and I sit down, Jake gobbles again. I get about 30 yards off of the cow pasture and there's about 40 yards between me and the creek well i call well all of a sudden a big one gobbles i hear a full gobble i said all right there's a good one in here well after a while i hear two gobble i said well good well after a while i called and i see a turkey coming through the trees and lights down there near the creek well then here comes another one here comes another one and when it was all over with, there was eight strutting gobblers and four jakes down there at the creek. And I'd call, and they would they wanted to come to me, but there was big puddles of water. But on those water, between the water, was a little <laughs> island. Look at him. Uh, he looks like yeah. I know he's about to pass out. He's I'm he, not. Your eyes are red for some reason. I don't know why. But uh. But either anyways. way. All right. Well, the turkeys are down there, and the water's here, more than there, little strips of land coming through there. So I know they pretty much got to come by me, 20 yards. I probably shouldn't tell this on camera. I'm probably going to go to jail. But uh, yeah, I they wouldn't come tell at all. Okay. And so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they come up there, and they go on one of those little strips between the water, 20 yards from me. And they're gobbling, all eight of them strutting, the four jakes in the back. So I got to make a decision, which turkey. Every one of them had long beards. I said, yeah, man, I don't know which one to shoot. There's a big oak tree between me and them, uh, right close to them. I said, first one comes out behind that tree, strutting. I said, I'm fixing to shoot that one. So he comes out, and he stops about that far from the tree. Well, I said, Poof, like that when I did, and he throws his head straight up. I shoot, and I kill him. And uh, <laughs> yeah. well, no comment that, after that. That, that so. story went straight to pot after we said not to kill the rest of so, them. Uh, I think so, people uh, can read uh, between the lines. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. I don't mind telling it. If it was 100 years ago, they would come rest me now. I, it's a complete accident. I was proud of it, but it was an accident. Well, uh, he falls out dead. Well, I see another one over there flopping, I think. And all what? eight. I, and the rest of them all, <laughs> no, 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 all eight, but, but so I get up and kind of jog over there to the turkeys, and uh, I notice one run by me, take off running up to the cow pasture. Yeah. I said, what the heck? You know, I could have kicked him. He takes off running up to the cow pasture. So I, I'm scared. I'm nervous. The rest of the turkeys are gone. Two of them's out there flopping. Scares me to death. So I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get caught by the law, and it's a complete accident. But what had happened when I said, Pook, that turkey stood its head straight up when I shot. My pattern was just big enough. Two had stuck their head out behind the tree. Their bodies was not out, but just their, I didn't notice it. Well, two of them was laying there dead. That one run by me. I go get them two. Well, I'm thinking, I got a mile walk back. I got a gun over my shoulder. So how am I going to get them there? I'll be tired toting both of these. So I pick them up, and I walk up to the cow pasture and trying to make a decision. I walk up to the cow pasture. I look out in the cow pasture. There's something out in the cow pasture. So I walk out there. There's another turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Three dead. Two 11-inch beards, one 10-inch beard. My gosh. <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking, how am I going to get these to the truck? How am I not going to go to prison? <laughs> uh, so I take my – I had boots on that laced up. I took my laces out of my boots and I put around the, I made a noose and put around two turkeys' heads, tied them to my belt, got the other one, threw it over my shoulder and my gun on the other, and I start walking for a whole mile with them turkeys. Well, I get about 50 yards from the truck 
And naturally, if you're out there doing this kind of stuff, you're thinking, well, there's one game more than call of Coffee County, two, maybe three. But he's always at your truck whenever something goes wrong, you know. Mm-hmm. You, you're you're like, thinking that. Yeah, so I drop, I drop, take my two uh, turkeys off my belt. I take one to the truck. I hide it, and I come back, get the next one. I take it, and I do it. I did it. I get home. I take my picture. It was a freak accident. I, I wish it wouldn't have happened. I'd rather have three hunts, but it happened. But uh, two had 11-inch beard, and one had a 10-inch beard. It was all good birds. I'm sure the statute of limitations is. Yeah. Either way. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know. If, if, yeah, if it's not, how. come and get me. I got air conditioning work to do tomorrow. It'd be better be in prison <laughs> than out there doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I will agree uh, yeah. on that. Yeah. I will agree on that. So, uh, deer hunting and all. So, I grew up with him deer hunting and turkey hunting and, and the whole nine yards. But m- my thing is, dad was all about reading sign pretty much my our whole my whole life and talon like like we said talon was a big beer he he she, he was more of a bird hunter he about said yeah. beer drinker did you hear him? he said beer. <laughs> hey. no i'm I'm a beard hunter is what he yeah he's beard, hunter. <laughs> beard but hunter, he's beard. more of a bird hunter than he is a deer hunter but no. i grew up with following dad in and reading deer sign Doing stuff like that, looking for trails, looking for tracks, looking for rub scrapes, the whole nine yards. Um, <clears throat> so that was all back before cameras and all that stuff. Dad used to be in his old age, and I feel like it's I feel like it's probably gonna happen to me. It'll probably happen to you. But like <laughs> Dad, in his older age, has gotten to where it don't make it don't make a doo doo about it. He don't care no more. He's just like. He walks in. He's <laughs> rustling leaves. If the deer's gonna come, the deer's gonna come. If his nose is sticking out, he used don't care. to when I was younger and I was following Dad. It was you got to pick your feet up. You dragging your feet. Yeah. Step in. The step steps. in. Step in my steps. Yeah. That way you not make you not crunching leaves because I'm not gonna step on a stick. But I know you may step on a stick. Don't crack that stick. If you see a stick, that's where I learned first. That's where I first learned that. If you see a stick, don't just step on it for whatever reason because it thing may, it pow, it mm. pops. Well, the deer's probably listening. Whatever. Now, me and Talon's like that. Me and Talon are, we put in work on this deer. We got a big buck down here. We want to have the best chance of shooting it. And Dad, he's just eh, walking down the road. He ain't got no <laughs> camouflage on. He dressed like he is today. He's going to the deer stand like, ah, whatever, you know. Turkey hunting, too. And yeah, hunting. yeah, turkey hunting. Back to the day. A well, turkey don't know what you are when you talk. Yeah. To a certain extent, I understand that. But neither does a deer, and I ain't never talked like we're talking now, and a deer not take off running no. or look at you like, what in the world is that? Yeah, and I feel like deer, turkeys man. do the same thing. But Dad, he is in his old age, he's, I guess you could say, mellowed me- he's out. mellowed out. Yeah. And he's just, but used to, it was my poor old granddaddy at one time went duck hunting with yeah, us. Yeah, this is a good story listening to <laughs> My poor old granddaddy went duck hunting with us he's he's passed away now uh great guy he's good as good as gold you and he wasn't mean get, to him or he wasn't mean like to him or nothing like that but but dad took it serious you know it was back when we duck hunted uh we had started duck hunting in mississippi and arkansas talon had just gotten old enough to start going and dad had been going dad went duck hunting the day talon was born and mom and dad no, no, day no, no, after no. or the day like after three days, three days later, later. Yeah, either way whatever. got a newborn baby Dad liked the duck hunt. He Three went. Three days that later, well, that's decision. any better. Bad <laughs> decision. I went to bad <laughs> decision, yeah. <laughs> he don't recommend doing that. No, uh, no. So we went duck hunting, and, and this time we was in, I think we was in what? It, was it Greenville or Green Greenville, Mississippi? Somewhere in Mississippi. Caleb was with us. Talon was with us. Me, We all went. And my granddaddy tagged along on this trip because it was going to be easy walking. It was just going to be field hunting and stuff like that. Well, like I said, Dad's mellowed out over the years, but me and Talon's just like him now. But back then, my granddaddy I went. I got my butt whooped back then. Yeah, my granddaddy went with us on this trip. Well, the ducks would come over, and they'd you know they'd do like ducks do. They circle, circle, and circle. Well, ducks can see really good, so you want to be still. You want to be quiet. Still. Still, mostly now, but still, <laughs> just be still, be still, and let them come in, let them work. Well, my granddaddy. <laughs> We all had masks back then. Now, Dad, don't wear a mask. 
He don't go, he don't paint his face, he don't wear a mask, he don't do nothing to try to camouflage himself, you know. So, it, matter of fact, matter now, fact, most of the time we have to tell him, zip your zip your jacket up. You got on a white good. t-shirt under yeah, your jacket. Now, <laughs> now me and me and Jansen, like, we wear like just a little neck gaiter and pull the neck gaiter up over our nose. Yeah, just to hide us a little bit, you know, best not, we can. Which it doesn't matter if we do or not, because at the end of our blind, we got a guy down there just, just like this. He just look into the sky. His chest hair is pure out. <laughs> I ain't got much. So, uh, so my granddaddy goes with us, and we're all sitting in a blind, and it's just a it's a dry blind. It's sitting on the bank. We're all sitting in that blind. Well, ducks come over and they start circling. We're calling to them and all that, and they're working and they're working. Dad was in the prime of, you know, be still, let them work, all that stuff. Which I don't blame him back then because <laughs> back then we were Dad had been duck hunting in Mississippi, but me and Talon we we gone on Mississippi and Arkansas trips where we ain't shoot a we didn't shoot a duck so any duck that came over like let's shoot this one duck we treat it like a th- 130 class deer used to like, be more we fun duck one. hunting back then too like whenever i was younger it used to be more fun because we were the only people in the area that done it there wasn't many people. very few yeah. yeah there was not many people in the area that done it that one and now duck dynasty came out and i i mean mm. everybody and their mama hunts. yes duck hunts. so my granddaddy's sitting in the blind and uh dad He's telling us, don't move, you know, they're they're working, don't move, don't move, you know, he just keeps saying that, that way nobody will move, well, my, then dad, <laughs> dad looks over at Peepaw, and Peepaw, <laughs> back when he played football, he broke his nose a few times, so he had a big, long nose, well, he had his old mask up, and Peepaw had his mask over, <laughs> Peepaw had his mask over his mouth, but his nose Not was his still nose. sticking out. <laughs> Dad said, hey, picky, picky mask up over your nose a little bit, you know, so people don't pick his nose up over the mask. He's sitting there like this. And when the deer, when the ducks come in, Dad didn't even understand what he was doing. He didn't know he was doing this to people. But people didn't know. He wasn't saying a word. He was just sitting there. He was just enjoying being with all of us. And he was sitting in the blind like this, you know. Well, he's an older fella. He can't do what we're doing, you know. Well, Dad's still he's saying, be still, get down, get down get down so we're all sitting there we're used to dad saying that so we're already down you know we're just being still well people every time dad says get down get down get down <laughs> people's playing people's get lower and yeah lower he's and getting lower. lower and lower so he's get down get down get down <laughs> people's in the bottom of the cotton picking pit <laughs> And Dad says, all right, shoot him. We get up and we go to shooting. And Peepaw, he's trying to get up like this, and he can't get up to shoot. And uh, anyway, if we all look over there, and Peepaw, he was down in the bottom of the pit and all that stuff. And he said, if this is how it is, I don't even like the duck hunt. You know, it's, <laughs> this is ridiculous. You can't even see the bird when he comes in. So anyway, so Dad used to be more serious about camouflaging and being quiet and all that stuff. And it is good to do all that, like play in the wind. Dad used to say, you know, you play the wind deer hunting. You you wanna you wanna play the wind. You wanna do it smart. You wanna do that now. He just goes sits if the wind's bad. He don't see one. He don't see one if he goes and the wow. wind's good. He sees one. He shoots one. But he don't. They can't even, smell you. They can't smell you. You can wash your you can wash your clothes in diva and go hunting. They can't smell you. According to this guy, <laughs> Dad has mellowed out big time. Yeah. So when you would go hunting after dog hunting, uh-huh. and you were learning, uh, so would you just find the most fresh sign that you could hunt over that if it was close to a thicket or at at that point in time i was hunting uh a lot of sign the most sign i would hunt but then i wasn't realizing all i was hunting was does young bucks i wasn't hunting nothing that was very uh quality deer Mm -hmm. i was just hunting mass amounts of deer so it'd be like if you go to a food plot you see 20 does come out there well, that ain't what you're out there to hunt. That's not, I mean, you're going to see them. But uh, then I started narrowing it down to quality of sign instead of quantity of sign and started hunting things like that, like uh, knowing to hunt deer on a cold, windy day. And I learned this stuff from just sitting there watching. I drive through property, and I'm talking about it would be 25 degrees, wind blowing like crazy. I drive through this property I had leased. Well, on the sunny side, I'd see two does and a buck jump up, good buck, jump up and go over hill. Well, I'd always notice it. Whenever I'd get into shaded areas, I never saw any deer. It would always be on the sunny side of the hill. So I started thinking, well, you know, deer just like me. I'm sitting over here in this shadow over here in a ladder stand. 
freezing to death. And I look over there on that hillside and I see the sun lit up over there. They want to be in that too. They want to get the sunlight on them. Everything's thawing out on that side and everything yeah. still froze on this side. You know, you know so they got to be cold. One deer that I killed that was the, the probably the biggest deer I've ever killed. I was actually sitting in a ladder stand at the long shot plot. And uh, it was, you know, breaking daylight. I'm freezing. Sunlight comes up and I can see sun barely hitting that hillside of there. And in my mind, I was sitting there thinking, well, if I'm a deer and I want to warm up, that's where I'm going to be. I'm not going to be over here in this shade. You know, and it's still ice hanging off the trees and all that. So I actually come down and walked over and got him in a other ladder stand over there and climbed up it. And I'm a firm believer, 8 o'clock, the big buck, buck ain't going to walk to 8 o'clock. I mean, you got everybody's taking their kids to school. Everybody's going to work. There's noise on the highway. There's Whenever that 8 o'clock when everybody's job starts, it's when the school kids are in. And you can just hear that difference in the noise of the street cars and the stuff going up down the road. It'll just quieten off. Kind of like it does in the afternoons, about six, seven o'clock. Right before yeah. dark, right, right, right that dark, you know. It'll, it'll real quieten quiet. off whenever it quietens off. Well, he can hear a lot better. He can maneuver. Things is not out as much. And every deer I've killed pretty much has been eight o'clock, between eight and nine o'clock that I, it's been a quality deer. So I got over there and I was sitting in my ladder stand looking down that hill where I killed the other deer, but I hadn't killed him yet. It was late. It was. This was that week before he killed the one he shot three times. But uh, I was sitting in my ladder stand looking down it, and I caught a glimpse out of something coming out of the bottom on my right hand side, and it was four does. And they come out the hills like this. They was halfway up the hill, and they come around like that, and I was in a. Uh, I believe it was a uh, white oak tree about that big around setting up on a fence line. Uh, but it was all pines out there. I could see about waist high. Well, after they come, they got right at my feet, probably within 10 yards of my stand, and they stopped, and I couldn't move. They finally ended up going on under the fence or through the fence and going on through some bigger pines. Well, I looked over, and it looked like a small calf coming out 200 something pounds I mean good size when I looked I could see him he had a good rack on him well he was left handed and I'm sitting there and he comes on around and he would throw his head up the wind was quartering me like this the does had walked through it I may have got spooked and went on into the woods but it was quartering I was afraid the wind was going to change directions and go towards him and he'd bolt and be gone so he was about 100 yards, and I got my rifle on him left-handed like that and shot and killed him one shot out there. But All because you moved from one stand to the next stand because yeah, you saw I the bet, sunshine coming up yeah. hitting that hill over I'm there. I'm at the other stand. I probably, I probably don't see a deer, or if mm-hmm. I do, it ain't, you know. But just that movement mm-hmm. and uh, learning that kind of stuff. Which, helped out a lot that goes back to dad told me one time we had this place called the hilltop plot and dad swore by the hilltop plot one reason is because the hilltop plot always had sunshine on it pretty quick in the mornings and in the afternoons it was the last to have it was the last to have sunshine on it especially on windy cold days and i probably froze up on the biggest deer that i've ever killed it probably would have been killed. as big I mean, shot, that I would have killed, yeah. yeah. I, froze, I froze up on one of the biggest deer I would have killed um, on the hilltop plot. And one reason I chose the hilltop plot that day, uh, Dylan Manning, my cousin, was with me. He went to the Louisiana plot. He had, uh, I think he said he had 19 deer in his food plot at that at that point in time. Uh, one small buck wasn't a shooter. But uh, I went to the hilltop plot. One reason is because Dad told me, he said, you know, them deer, they like the sunshine the sunshine on really really cold windy days they like that sunshine they'll either sit on the side where the wind's not blowing where the sunshine comes and hits they'll definitely sit on that side where that wind's not hitting them real real hard on that side if it's really cold well this particular day it was freezing bark busting cold i'm talking about you could not put on enough clothes to make you warm me and dylan went in i got in the hilltop plot the deer come up that side dad told me he said you're gonna have does come in on that back side, watch that back corner back there. I watched it. There was four does come by. 
They went on around. They got in that creek bottom. Next thing I know, I hear crashing in the woods. Hear them does come. They come up to that hilltop plot. Like I said, the wind is howling at this point in time. I'm talking about blowing hard. Um, anyways, he comes with the wind. He don't come against the wind. He comes with the wind. The wind's blowing. Towards you. Yeah, he's it's blowing towards me. And, uh, and it's howling. Like I said, it's howling. And he comes out with the wind. He's following them does. And he comes up. And I froze up. Didn't even... I didn't even pick my gun up. I saw him and thought, oh, my God, that's a monster. Because, like Dad said, <clears throat> them them pine trees was about chest high, and all I could see was rack, looked like a rocking chair coming out across there. And he was trotting behind them does, and when he got up there, he was probably 70, 80 yards from me, and I still ain't even picked my gun up. The does, I completely forgot about them, so when he come up there, he stopped right before he come into the plot, he stopped in them pine trees. All I could see was Rack looking back and forth. And I thought, God almighty, he's a monster. Uh, way outside the ears. A really good deer. And uh, I forgot about the does that was standing out there at 15 yards from me. <laughs> that joker. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about Call of Duty in a minute. He'll, <laughs> he'll liven up, boy. <laughs> he'll liven up. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so I tried to pick my gun up, and I forgot about the does. I got my gun up, and when I was getting my gun up, one of them does was standing out in front of me looking dead at me, and I never even paid her any attention. I had my eyes on him the whole time. He never saw me, but one of the, when that doe when that doe blew at me because she saw me moving, he turned around. He didn't waste no time. He didn't just loaf off, nothing like that. He dropped his back in, and he took off across them pine trees back into where he'd come from. And I tried to get my gun up in time, but there was no – all I could see was just rack going out across them pines, and I knew I had just screwed up on the biggest deer I'd ever seen. But long – you know, the reason I'm telling that is because Dad told me on a windy day in the sunshine is where they want to be on that hillside. And sure enough, that's that's where I went, and that's where that's – and that's how he gets all his credit mm-hmm. on every deer I kill because most of the time before I go, he tells me, if you, if I was you, I'd go to this place. So I go, there he is. If I was you, I'd choose this place. I go, there he is. So, anyways, but yeah, they uh, but not all the time though. The problem is not all the time do you have a hillside where you do have sunshine. I no. mean, you just got to do the best you can with it. Yeah, it was a. And in that area. situation, I guess I, you we did. Dad's always said, <clears throat> if you find a rub. And you find rubs on little sticker trees like this, you don't know how big. It could be a big deer. It could be. But more than likely, it's probably a scrub buck going through there, and he's just making his you know, making his mark. Uh, we always look for trees, especially where we was hunting up there. We'd at least look for trees as big around as that cup or as big as around as your leg. If you had a rub on that. Yeah, there was trees up there that big that was rub. Is that what you mean by quality sign? Yeah. Yes. Stuff like that? Yeah. Sure. Stuff and that indicated a big deer, not just yeah. Right. Yeah, I didn't want how to go tall in there it goes up. Thirteen inch wide buck. I know they weren't going to shoot and waste my days. Right. So. Mm-hmm. so like thirteen inch buck. I mean, thir- not thirteen inch, but how high? How high the horns go? You can look at the rub and see how high it is. And that's kind of hard to do around here though, because a lot of the times the places that we're hunting has got yopon bushes around. Yeah. It's got little scrub buck bushes like that. You know. Very few times, I think here in Op, Alabama, the the only the biggest rub I've ever seen was across town going out towards I know. Uh, I was training dogs one day, had no clue. I didn't care nothing about deer hunting that property by no means, but I was dog hunting one. I mean, uh, I was dog training one day out in a pasture, and uh, there was a swamp that ran alongside that pasture, oh, and uh, <laughs> and um, pearl. I just went down to that swamp for whatever reason just to look and on the side of that i saw a rub in up the same way we used to see rubs up there it was on a tree that was probably as big around as my thigh uh a good tree and as high up as probably my stomach is how much he had rubbed off that tree and uh and he had just done it because it was probably it was probably it was probably late February. Uh, okay, late February. It was probably late February, freezing cold. And uh, I saw that rub. And right then is when I started thinking, okay, this is what Dad's talking about, or this is what this was what Dad was talking about when he would find rubs on, 
on cedar trees that were this big around and how high up the the horns or something would go you could tell he was a good deer by how how high up he went on that tree and how big around that tree was it wasn't no scrub buck you know yeah no spike no six points gonna make or a small six points gonna make a tree gonna rub a tree that hard uh and the shavings were still at the bottom so i knew it was, it, fresh. It was fresh and, and i makes... was thinking if i could find something like that during deer season mm-hmm. i would hang a stand right there but i didn't have permission on that property to hunt um and they wouldn't give me permission on that property to hunt and i have went back and asked and they wouldn't give me permission which is why he's probably in there nobody's ever messed with him but Mm -hmm. that was probably seven or eight years ago when i saw that uh but yeah dad used to tell me he's like you know look for big trees rubbed and stuff like that but like i said around here it's kind of hard to do that makes sense too because uh a couple of things that i'm thinking about as far as you know quality sign uh I know there was a few years back on a creek walking it, and there was tons of tracks. Turns out, I thought it was going to be a lot of deer crossing mm-hmm. through there and a lot of different kinds of deer crossing through there. And what it ended up being was a doe and two fawns, yeah. and they were traveling it all the time. Every day, yep. yeah. And so I you know, kind of learned not to get excited about that. Or uh, the trails that mm-hmm. are just beat down that it looks like, deer just using it religiously typically t- tend to be does yeah as well mm-hmm. so that's kind of like uh that deer he killed with his bow this past year i found a trail coming out of a beaver pond but you it, it was obvious the track that was going back and forth was not a doe mm-hmm. and there was a cedar tree down in there that was a pretty good cedar tree that was rubbed yeah. that talon and dad found when they walked in there and sent me a picture and was Hint like there's a good one to- Dad sets him up on every deer he kills. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got the property. I got permission on the property. You got permission but on the property. I told him what tree to put his tree in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad, I got permission on this property. Can you show me where he's at on it? <laughs> no. He, uh, well, he we walked down in there and I told you to get permission. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, mean, I had permission before you walked down in there. It had been he pretty didn't tell me all that, by gone. the way. Huh? He didn't tell me all that, by the way. <laughs> oh, I figured yeah, that part out when we were at yeah. a shower or well, something. Well, we couldn't have went in there. <laughs> And you told yeah, me that you and Talon went in there, went in there. prior yeah. to having yeah. permission. Yeah, so I told you had Talon. permission. And yeah. then we Talon went. was over scouting on Father Down or Jansen. Or well, the biggest thing is I got permission on the 200 acres. Yeah. Well, there was 25 on acres on the other side of the dirt yeah. road. And Dad said, well, have the you The biggest out? piece of property ain't necessarily yeah, what that's right. Yeah, that's, how, that, right. that's how it happened. I mean, just because you go deeper in the woods don't mean you're going to kill a bigger deer. So I showed Dad and Talon electronically where I was hunting at. I showed them there's 25 acres on this side of the dirt road. There's 200 on this side of the dirt road. Well, they just happened to be going up that dirt road one day, and Dad was like, let's go in here on this 25. We won't go on the 200 where he's been looking and where that other guy's hunting. Let's go on the 25, just see what we can find. So they did. They went down in there. They walked down to that swamp, and uh, and that's when I got the call that says, hey, you need to put a lock on in here because there's some deer sign in here, and it's a good deer sign. So you will see something come across, whether you kill it or not. That's up in the air, but you will see something. Eventually, mm-hmm. something's going to come across. So I did. I went in there. I put my, I put me and Dad. I think we hung my lock on in there. I put mm-hmm. a camera up, and it wasn't, it wasn't too long. It was probably two or three weeks after that. I got a few small eight points, uh, and it was two or three days after that. I got the big nine that come through, uh, limping, and he come right down that trail that Dad said that's coming right out of that swamp, coming across that creek, off into there, going towards the dirt road, and cutting back into the other into that other thick stuff going into that swamp on the other side which is where me and you drug the deer out in that swampy buck brush looking stuff trying to get out of there yeah, which ready. was absolutely i'm terrible. ready to do an episode on that deer so that we can talk about that <laughs> drag out we owe where you got it. us lost oh you big nah. time on that because all, all you do is go up <laughs> hill and you come to the road i ain't get lost on that man we, we were in a swamp uh, yeah. We ended up in a swamp. We sure yeah, did. <laughs> soaking way, wet, <laughs> soaking wet. Taylor Up had to. Uphill is usually not a swamp. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you go downhill to go to the deer. I would have walked to the yellow. cliff. I mean, yeah. there was a yeah, pure cliff. Yeah, it was a yet. cliff going off. But well, the problem was. And of course, it was a 200-pound deer. Of course. Yeah. I t- well, what I told Taylor was the dirt road's just right here, so let's don't go back to where we yeah, where I shot him. Let's just go saying. straight this way because the dirt road's just right in front of us. Well, what I thought was right in front of us, we was walking parallel with the with the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Taylor's like, something's wrong if you said it was about 50 yeah. yards off here. Yeah. So anyways, uh, but yeah, that's another day, another story. But that deer come right down that trail, 
And the reason I got on that deer is because you called me earlier that day and said that you had killed a buck that day chasing does, Mm -hmm. checking does. And I thought, well, it's 75 degrees. I'm not going today. But when you called me in at work, you called me at work and you Mm -hmm. said, hey, man, I just got one and he was chasing does. I said, I got to go now. So I knew they was chasing. And that night I went is when I gave you a call and said, hey, man, I just killed that big nine. And, of course, you was already on your way to, uh, I think, op to eat with your family. Yep. Uh, you and Greeley. So it kind of worked out right until you didn't get to eat with your family much because it was about <laughs> 10 o'clock before we got out of the woods. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> Don't ever go back well, with you. It worked uh, out. Deer hunting, yeah. location has a lot to do with deer hunting, but location even has more in turkey hunting. Uh, everybody talks about, you know, they call up a turkey. They're a great turkey hunter. They're this or that. There's What you need to do is locate where a turkey wants to be. And go sit there and make you look like a lot better turkey hunter than you really are. Mm-hmm. I mean, you hear all these people, yeah, I went down to the food plot and set up. And I called him up to the food plot and I killed him. Well, he wanted to come to that food plot anyhow. <laughs> he well, was he coming. Down, hey, yeah, he flew down there every morning. That's where he was going to that food plot to strut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't call so him that so, I mean, I ain't saying it didn't help or, you know, I can't say you. I've called turkeys before that, uh, uh, went places that they didn't normally go it wasn't a field it wasn't an open area i've called them to some places but everybody tells you you know they're a great turkey hunter they can call one this that and other what a lot of people need to know is location where you see it where a turkey wants to go increases your opportunity of killing a turkey 80 to 90 percent same with duck mm-hmm. hunting yeah same I mean, with duck hunting. They're yeah. either there or they're not. Yeah. I, think the, biggest, the X. I yeah. think the biggest thing in turkey hunting is having turkeys on your property. Yeah. You, you can kill, kill you can kill a bird. You can take mm-hmm. a person that's got a private land that I has could five take, turkeys on I could his, take you. Never mind, hit you. You love to deer hunt more. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, you love to deer hunt. You love to deer hunt more than turkey hunt. You've told us that. But I could take you out on a piece of property that has tons of turkeys, and I guarantee you you'd come back with one. Just because you're a hunter and you know where that bird wants to go, and if you see him in that field, you know the next morning I'm going to be in that field. Well, if you're in that field, you're more than likely 80 to 90 percent going to see that turkey, and if you're a good shot, you'll kill him. Story to tell you. If you want to, if you want to find out who's a pretty decent hunter, you can drop them off in private land that's been hunted a lot and see if they come back with a turkey. Yeah. If they come back with a turkey, then then you know that private they, land. Or I mean, public, pr- public, public land, public, public land that's been hunted a lot. Like, yeah, we went to uh, a place in. Uh, we had a turkey gobbling. We walked down in there and set up on the turkey. Turkey gobbled. He finally just shut up. Well, I said, well, let's walk on in there where he was at. We'll learn the location. We can come back. Got on down in there. Well, I called a turkey way off. I mean, barely could hear him gobbling. I said, you hear that turkey? He said, yeah, I heard him. So we sat there a second. I hit it again. He gobbled. He was getting closer. Now, we're back in some more property that you can just see. And that's bad when he's young. Yeah, I know. We're fixing <laughs> quick. So <laughs> it's through a place that well, the camera is going to be on them. Yeah. yeah right. Okay, good. Our so, ice cream. Well, milk. y'all should talk more. But uh, <laughs> he's gobbling. I said, he's coming. And you can see through these woods 300 yards easily. So we walk on a little closer and get there, and it's going downhill. We're on a little knoll, big wide oaks, wide open, probably 40 yards that you can see. Creek down in the bottom right there. Jansen says, we need to cross that creek. I said, if we cross that creek, he's going to see us. I said, because he's coming quick. Jansen says, no, we need to cross that creek. I said, I'm not crossing that creek. I said, we'll find a place right here. I said, set that. And I don't like hunting decoys, but we had a decoy, Jake or whatever. Mm-hmm. He said, I set it up right there. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mouth here <laughs> says, uh, well, I'll tell you what to do. If you call him across that creek, I'll kiss your butt. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay, and I'm videotaping it too. He said, all right, whatever, but you're fitting to learn. We're not going to call him across that creek. <laughs> I said, okay, <laughs> sit down and shut up. So we sat down. We called Turkey's Hammer, and he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Well, he gets to the creek, and this has been 20 minutes later. He's he's closing distance. He's at the creek, and I'm talking about he's hammering just 40 yards. Right but he's staying <sighs> across the creek. But he's on the other side of the creek. And I knew he was. So I he told Dad, be, I said, I told you. Yeah, he's sitting there running his <laughs> mouth at me. I told you, you should have been on the other side of the creek. We're done kidding. I said, just sit down and shut up. So he's sitting there. 
I said, I'm going to show you something. Watch this. Well, the turkey's pacing up and down. You'd hear him gobble right here. After a while, I'd call. He'd gobble right here. After a while, I'd call. He'd gobble here. He's pacing the creek back and forth. I said, watch this. I cut to him. He hammered. I cut back to him. He hammered. I cut to him. He hammered. I said, shut it off. I just got quiet. Didn't do anything. He's hammering. He's hammering. Didn't call again. Didn't call again. Didn't let him do anything. After a while, you hear. <laughs> there he is. Right, right. I saw right his tail fan. Fifteen yards later, I saw he his shoots tail him. fan. I said, "Oh my God, there he is!" <laughs> <laughs> fifteen. He's fifteen yards, and he uh, when, I it, shot when him. he shot him at fifteen yards, he had three beards. Yeah, yeah. I, that's the beards. one on my wall in there in my room that I got mounted or whatever. Yeah, and, and you know what I done. He's sitting there. He's I, get, he's I go, getting the turkey. I, stuff. I jump I'm up to get my tail. <laughs> he's undoing his belt, and he turns say, around. Ready. And he said, "Get ready to kiss my hand." <laughs> <laughs> hey, but yeah, that was, that was something. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, uh, it. I don't know, but like back to the deer hunting stuff. Dad, he 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 just. I don't know. It's gotten a lot easier, and Dad lets us do his camera stuff. So we'll put his cameras where we want to put them. And for some reason, somehow, his camera had our big bucks on it this year. Just, I guess just because it had his name on the back of it. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to get time to call of duty. But we was, we were about to wrap time. up, and time Jansen had to throw in that detail. Just so everybody knows, <laughs> yeah. we put, we put uh, the camera. I will right. say, we ain't said a lot about Talon, but Talon's probably the better shot of all of us as far as bird hunting. <laughs> he didn't have to say all that. No. He's a, he's a good duck that hunter. For? He's, well, because we didn't talk about you deer hunting much. I feel bad as a bird. <laughs> not taking you in that you kill more deer. I'm about to tear up over here. I hope I'm right. I'm going to look like that Indian years ago. There was a commercial. He was around all this trash on the earth or whatever and it not just showed an indian and one tear deer. drop coming down his face that's how i feel right now <laughs> no, I didn't go to that's talon's deer. yeah talon that was talon's choice he he knew he could go anytime he wanted to but that was yeah. talon's choice he he was more of a he's more of a he camaraderie was. kind of guy like yeah that's he great, wants to that. go and have a good time yeah rather than sit there for two or three hours but, anybody out there listening if you take your kids let them kill something every once in a while it don't matter if it's a trophy it's a trophy to that kid Mm -hmm. He's gonna enjoy it. He's gonna want to go back. Mm -hmm. Let him do that. I I didn't do that as much with talent I should have. But I didn't get much um, camaraderie feel from him last year though. When y'all were out there with me when I was cleaning flatbread, yeah, I could tell he was ready to go. <laughs> when, when it comes talent, to work, when he's it comes through. to work, talent's not gonna uh, hang around for that much. But yeah. hold on. But now, in all fairness, in his defense, it had been like an hour and a half. Yeah, I think we'd probably run out of yeah. cookie dough for him to eat. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eating cookie dough while you're cleaning yeah. the deer well, you know when it comes yeah. to work hold when, the light the light's over there at the truck you know he's eating cookie dough it's just when it comes to work <laughs> talon's like a blister he shows up when it's over yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey. he, he ain't gonna do much of the work but now that's how it is sometimes uh, he, but. Uh, he had a good story on the deer he killed mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. was that was good that was a good one he was excited that my that, biggest so thing like, with that one was i wanted which I don't think I would have killed him, to be honest with you. I didn't want. I didn't have the time. I'd already killed Kicker. And Talon, uh, I saw Talon start hunting him hard. So I was, I was like, just let the dog eat, you know. So Talon, he started I eight, still gotta go see that eight deer. to nine days. Talon stayed on that deer oh, yeah. probably more than eight to nine days. But it was eight to nine consecutive days that you stayed on him. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you sat in there way more than eight to nine days on 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 uh Houdini. Houdini, and then mm -hmm. finally killed him. And uh, so when he finally killed Houdini, I was like, well, man. And that's what my biggest thing is. I want me and Talon to be able to start going on some trips, you two on some trips, and going and enjoying the same thing and having success all at the same time, too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, anyways. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this <laughs> podcast. I want to wrap it up. I want to go see your deer because uh, I didn't do it I agree. Let's wrap yeah. it up. I want we'll to come put back. some on there. I want to come back and just talk about some average stuff, or not tell stories, or whatever. And just come back. And yeah, just talk, talk normal. Yeah. Well, you just, can be back on the podcast. Ain't nobody yeah. banning you from it. Well, I didn't know. It's been a long time. I've been told I was going to get on this one. I finally got to show up. <laughs> Hey, that was because I texted him and said, when are we doing this? I know, and I've been telling them. I've sat here at the house. I said, are we ever going to do that podcast y'all talking about? 
Oh, Dad, let it go. Let it go. No, what? he didn't say let it, let it go. What? No, he's got Taylor worried. <laughs> <laughs> that is a don't tell Taylor. He'll call us let's no. get no, I, no, I, I, no. I, I would always ask, and they'd be like, let me see what Tim. Let me, no. let me see what hey, Tim I'm says. I'm always willing and ready. Yo. Hey. That's fine with me. I've enjoyed every bit of it. I hope y'all kill every one of them as far as I'm concerned. But One more thing before we close, and we, this is our closing comment. So the other day, Taylor said something to me that you've done your whole life, and I told him. But Taylor said the other day that he was very surprised he was shooting one pin on his on his bow, oh, yeah. and he was very surprised at how accurate he was. With no, just peep shooting, no peep sight. No peep sight. That's side. it. No peep sight. You like it a lot better. I do. I like it a lot. All yeah. right, so, but clear this up for me. As far as how you would aim, um, how would you – how would you aim with with just it's the pin? Is, it, is is the pin on the left side of the string, right side? Does it matter? Uh, I've never paid any attention to that. All I know is it's coming back to the same anchor point at the same time. And whenever I would come back and my string touched my nose, I knew I was right where I needed to be. And then I could shoot with both eyes open. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot better in the evening times. You get a peep sight and it's dust dark, something comes through there. Well, you may can see it's a buck. You may, well, then you got to sit there and close that one eye and find him through a hole that big and it's dusk and you don't know if that's him moving or a bush or something. If you can ever watch him with both of your eyes and never take your eye off of him and you draw on him, you never miss that movement right there. And as soon as that string touches that nose and you got that pin on that movement, you got him. So now I've always shot that way. And like distance it. wise, uh, you know, I was shooting a lot of bows, a lot older than what y'all was back, you know. But uh, I wasn't, I wasn't very six, eight inches up or down. I just knew if I, the farther out he is, the more chance he's gonna have that much longer to drop, to be in the drop zone where I needed him to be whenever I shot. So uh, I shot, I've, I've missed deer, but uh, I can't say that I've missed a deer because of not having a peep sight or something. I've actually had more deer to shoot at with my bow and could see and kill more consistent and quality kill shooting with both eyes open. That's the thing for me is when it gets dusky dark right there at the last part of mm -hmm. daylight, I really have trouble seeing. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's just the low light for me. Yeah. I've always been that way. Right. Um, but the other thing that I've picked up on with the no peep that I really like is when I when I did have my peep in, and and I'm not saying I would shoot a deer at these, this distance, but like at 60 yards, you have to adjust your anchor mm -hmm. compared to when you're at 20 yards mm -hmm. to be able to see through that peep. And what I like about running the no peep is anchor is the same every time. Yep. I, I'm running the nose button so I can feel it really good yep. when it's on the yep. tip of my nose. And I don't have to line a peep up. I just see my, my pin. Mm -hmm. That's it. And just. I've caught myself at dust. I've always ran a peep. Uh. But like a dad, dad swore by no peep. But I've always I've caught myself a few times at dusk dark wondering if I'm even looking through the peep mm -hmm. because I can't find that yeah. I can't find that I can't find that circle. That's right. It's got to turn because just right. There's yeah. too many variables. And I know mm -hmm. you can get glow in the dark ones and all that stuff. But I think yeah, that also and that dog on peep twist. Yeah, yeah. and it twist. Yeah. So so I do think if you get used to shooting with no peep sight and you like it, and I say. I, psh, by all means, I I well, do that. Well, the thing about in. peeps, it, it when you start out, you don't start out with a bow and arrow going and killing a deer. You don't just go get a bow and do it. What you do, you go get a bow and you go with your buddies and you shoot and you target and you this that and other. Well, you want to tell your buddy, you know, boy, I, driving I, nails. I, I drove a nail with that thing. I hit, you know, this big at fifty yards. Well, or I wouldn't shoot no deer at no fifty yards, but at thirty yards or twenty yards. But if you hit like that, you're you're within the kill zone. It, what's it matter if you're just stacking them on? You're mm -hmm. actually running arrows. So, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, and I will say that too. When I was running the peep, I could get groups, you know, like sure. like that and at 20 yards. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now that I'm running with the no peep, one of the trade offs is your your groups are opening up a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but it's but worth I, it though. Yeah. yeah you're but still you're in the seeing kill zone. Deer, that's that's right. right. You're still seeing more deer and can make a quality shot. Because you can see that area that you need to shoot because you never take your eye off of it as it's going across there. Where when a peep sight, you sit there and see it, and well, then you're trying to find it in that hole. And, mm -hmm. well, you know, if I got, is that on his shoulder? And you're looking, am I on his shoulder? Am I far enough back? So, to me, 
uh, the trade-off is better no peeps out. That's mm -hmm. I, I've been that way for a long time. But when you're out with your buddies and you're doing your old, you want to act like you're big and bad, and you know you're just tearing <laughs> up arrows. I had to go buy a dozen more arrows this past week because I shot the fletching off of my other. That's mm -hmm. when you just get a target bow. Yeah, that's, right. that's what you need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap it up and let's do it again sometime. Sounds good. I guess okay. I'll just – Get your number and we'll communicate. Sure, so that we can set up sure. and then just tell them. Any, anytime you want. Hey, we're going to do a podcast I'll if y'all want to join. <laughs> yeah, I'd hey. be glad to. All no. right. Well, Thank I enjoyed you. it, and uh, we'll do it again sometime. That's it. Sounds All good. Right. Thank y'all. I enjoyed it.